this holiday season. Every time you purchase a 12-ounce Starbucks coffee, a portion of the proceeds will be given to the Penny Foundation, the world's premier charity dedicated to helping down-on-their-luck content creators pay their daily bills. I need th that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills, the electric bill, the internet bill. So stop by your local Starbucks today and help send some Penne their way. It is uh, it is Christmas Eve, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so that's a thing. Uh, welcome, uh, seasons greetings, happy holidays uh, from everybody here at GTG Network and Productions, DSP News, the Snort Report, Snortbucks Coffee Company, the best beverage company. Um, welcome, uh, to, welcome to essentially our Christmas Eve edition of uh, of our Twelve Days of Galtmas, also known as the twelve uh, the second day of Galtmas. Uh, just, just one more day. <laughs> just one more day. Hopefully, you guys are all doing well. Hopefully, you guys finished all your shopping and everything. Hopefully, you guys are uh, you've made it safely to whatever your destinations were, um, if you will. Hopefully, you guys are uh, in a comfortable space um, at this time of year. Not much of a of a of a TED talk, uh, if you will. Um, you know, supposed to. Supposed to try to keep it, uh, keep it holly and jolly and whatnot. Um, yet again, I very much appreciate you guys sticking around for all of this. Uh, it's been a, <laughs> it's been a long one, especially choosing uh, me choosing to do all this stuff day by day, uh, except for this one and the last one. I'm actually doing this before Christmas Eve. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. But the video will be up tomorrow, uh, so that's a thing. Um, yet again. Hopefully all of you guys are doing well. As you guys know, uh, first uh, two rounds of Snortbucks is on me. Matter of fact, it's Christmas Eve, dude. Uh, Snortbucks is just on me. You know what I'm saying? All rounds will be on me and whatnot. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Still go up and get your punch cards punched. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason. Just because you know I'm taking care of the tab doesn't mean you shouldn't get your free punches in. Um, and I've got three videos that'll make up our broadcast, all brought to us by Snorpernell. Because why not uh, spend Christmas Eve with people you enjoy being around? So, with that being said, uh, three videos to make up our broadcast. A lot of salt, a lot of uh, rage on the piggies part. You know what I'm saying? Get you guys just a little bit of extra bacon. Get your sodium up a little bit just before you guys meet up with your families. Maybe you guys aren't having ham. <laughs> holidays maybe you guys are having turkey or duck or something like that so try to help you guys out with that on um on the way to whatever your destination is seasons greetings and happy holidays as usual ladies and gentlemen and give me just a second and i will see you guys in just a minute yeah Once again, YouTube and ad revenue. At this point, it's basically putting me at risk. Risk of being able to do this as a job anymore. Um, and or, not necessarily because I can't really. Once again, YouTube and ad revenue. At this point, it's basically putting me at risk of being able to do this as a job anymore. Um, and or. Not necessarily because I can't really quit doing this and get another job because another job wouldn't make as much money as I'm doing doing this as I've explained many times before. Um, but at this point, 
I honestly don't know what else to do, and what I'm going to do is seek uh, help from, from you, the viewers, for suggestions. I have a few suggestions already of other ways that I can bring in revenue to continue to do this as a job. Because YouTube <laughs> is... Oh, boy. What happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you strip a so-called man of everything that his sh that he's built us built up around him you know what i mean you take away his shield you take away his sword you take away his mace you take away his dagger when you take all of that away what do you have i want you guys to think about that as we're going through this ladies and gentlemen we're here with the first video that will make up uh our our christmas eve uh, uh snout miss if you're gout miss actually sorry snout miss was what was supposed to be on the second channel speaking of which uh someone did ask um what was the deal with uh would i be doing anything on the second channel on the fight club channel um I, I, well hopefully I, I think you you would probably know by now but um being that i did put it in one of the previous uh previous videos but um no I, i'm i just haven't had the energy to to try to take something on like that on two separate channels um if things if things work out next year um then hopefully i'll be able to give you guys a, a double shot if you will uh, you know, you get your Snort Bucks coffee over on this one right here, and then give you guys like cappuccinos and something else on the second channel. But I just, I, I didn't have the the energy to do so, um, and whatnot. I haven't been feeling that great uh, over the span of the year, so that wasn't something that was on the cards. So I was, I, that's why I, I tried to double up or even triple up on uh, this channel to try to make up the difference, um, which uh, I may have failed at, but uh, I, I tried at the very least. <laughs> I tried at the very, at the very least. So uh, my apologies if anybody wanted to see anything on the second channel, or even any streams. I just I just don't have it in me. Uh, I just I just don't have it. Um, as it pertains to that. So my apologies all around on that one. Now, back to what I was saying. Oh yeah. Um. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the first video that will make up our broadcast, uh, if you will, uh, of Galtmas, our Christmas Eve edition. This is brought to us by Snorpernell. KO Gaming slash DSP Gaming monthly begging and I need help guys. This is from February 24th of 2017 as usual. The links will be down in the description. Here we go. Changing YouTube is obviously screwing with things. I have evidence that I'm going to show you in this video that makes absolutely no logical sense. Um, I'm talking with Machinima about this. Basically, the bottom line is YouTube ad revenue, at least for me on my channels, is down into the toilet. Worse than January, which makes no sense because in January it was really bad. It always is bad in January because you had that big rush for the holidays, right? And then after the holidays, the ad revenue goes, boo, into the toilet uh, for about a month. And then all of a sudden in February, it comes back because you've got the Super Bowl. You've got big movies coming out. You get this big insurgence of ad revenue on YouTube. And for whatever reason, on my channels, it didn't happen. In fact, it's even worse than January by a large fucking margin. Leanna and I wanted to live together, and we knew that getting a place in Connecticut was going to be incredibly overexpensive. In fact, and this is no lie, I'm not even kidding you, the mortgage on this house is pretty much about the same payment as the condo in Connecticut. This fucking giant house- Now, I want you to think about this for a minute, because we've gone over this in a previous Galtmas. He said that he was paying $1,500 for the condo in Connecticut. Now, that's very well just being the condo and then the HMO fees, so keep that in mind. Um, but now he's saying, well, hey, the cost of the condo over there costs the same thing over here. And we have it confirmed that it's about 1200 bucks where he's at currently. So keep in mind about this $300 fluctuation or whatever the case may be. Secondly, he didn't want to live in Connecticut. He didn't want to live on the West or on the East Coast even. He wanted to go to the West Coast. Why? I couldn't tell you. Maybe because back in the early 2000s, there was a large influx of, uh, of very credible and very well-known pro players who had migrated from the New York area to the West Coast. Um, for any of you guys know your FGC lore, you kind of know about that. That's when um, that's when Justin Wong, one of many, went ahead and uh, passed the torch over to Sanford Kelly, essentially, you know, saying that the East Coast is yours now. He's going over to the West. Um, I think Ricky Ortiz had already left over to the West Coast. Um, Arturo's always been New York. New York's in his blood. He ain't leaving. Uh, who else is over there on the West? I think PR Raw. I think PR Barog and most of those guys, most of those people who made up evil geniuses, 
um, had been over on on the west. I think um, Chris G didn't migrate until later on. He didn't migrate over there until he got signed to Evil Geniuses, and that's when he went to he moved to Seattle, and then <laughs> that whole East Coast that whole Chris G thing is a whole other thing in itself. But the point being is that um, in some ways, maybe um, DSP was trying to follow along in that trend. Why? I don't know. To be honest with you, he hasn't he hadn't spoke. He wasn't really friends with any of those guys. Um, maybe acquaintances, but he wasn't friends with any of those dudes. So, and he was long out of the, you know, he wasn't anything relevant as it pertains to the FGC by that time anyway. So who knows why he chose the move? Who could say? Um, uh, it is what it is. I'm just throwing that out there just for just just to cover our bases. But um, he didn't want to stay on. The, he didn't want to stay on the East Coast. I mean, granted though, he has enemies everywhere. So it doesn't even matter. I mean, obviously they grew up and they moved on or whatever and they forgot about him, which probably hurts more than anything. But he has enemies in everywhere. And he spent a, just about the majority of his FGC career shitting on the West Coast, saying that they had all the advantages, they had all the money, they were the ones that were in control of SRK, they were the ones that had control of EVO. Keep in mind, they were the ones who started those things. Womp womp. But he has spent a good. He spent his whole career shitting on the West Coast. He spent his whole time. He spent, to be honest with you, the West Coast in a lot of way represents detractors before detractors. He always was wanting to prove himself to them. You know what I'm saying? And in a lot of ways, I think even now, even to this very day, I think he wants the detractors, trolls, haters, and critics. I think he wants their respect. And I think he wants acknowledgement. I think he wants acknowledgement that he is somebody. It's kind of sad when you think about it, really, to be honest with you. I don't need, I mean, you don't need to be acknowledged by your enemies. Your enemies are your enemies, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that in itself is enough and whatnot. So, you know, and most detractors, myself included in that, wouldn't even consider myself as DSP's enemy, to be honest with you. I'm someone who laughs at you and picks apart your fucking lies and bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't necessarily make me an enemy. And that in which that I cannot coexist must cease to exist. That's what you tell your enemies. That's who you tell people that you hate. One of us has to go. Mm. <laughs> you should be fortunate. <laughs> it's not giant, I say it's a normal sized house. In Washington, I say giant because in comparison to the condo, which is a rinky dink place in Connecticut, I'm paying pretty much the same. So that's why I wanted to move out. I wanted to get a house for us so we could have a life together. You know, I was hoping the business would get set up and things would go good here. She could get established here in Washington State, get a job, get maybe her own business going. And within a few years, we could see if we wanted to branch out and do other things and have our life together. I mean, honestly, maybe start a family and that kind of stuff. Marriage. These are the things that we were all kind of contemplating in our heads here together when we moved across the country to the Washington State. All right. So that was our personal life. We wanted to have a life together here. <clears throat> Leanna and, and my relationship here in Washington. In reality, what has happened here is my life has become work. Like, my life is 100% dictated by work. Meaning Wait a second, but didn't you say that when you were, used to hang out with John and Howard in Connecticut, your house, I mean, your life was 100% work? He did say that, didn't he? So, was it 100% work then, or is it 100% work now, or did it never really change? Did Leanna not have an idea of what she was walking into? What exactly happened? Because let's be honest, he moved her in under false pretenses anyway. See, the reason why DSP could never get his back fixed, right, is because there'd be no one to take care of him, wipe his ass, cook his meals and all that in his little rinky-dink condo in Connecticut. Moving out to Seattle was supposed to be his opportunity to possibly get the back surgery, the same back surgery, I believe, his mother had, which didn't fix anything, according to him. Um, anyway, uh, supposedly he was supposed to go out and get back surgery. Leanna would basically nurse him back to health. And then there you go. That was supposed to be a new start for everybody, right? It's supposed to be, you know, it was supposed to be a new beginning for DSP Enterprises. <laughs> <laughs> and for, you know, DSP Gaming and obviously for him and Panda and so on and so forth. And then they go out to con they go out to Seattle, sorry. And the weather and the atmosphere and all the possibilities and the people, it re-energized him, right? 
and the Connecticut Air especially, went ahead and activated his latent mutant ability, and he was able to sprout, he was able to grow, he was able to mutate additional baby backs around the weaker parts of his back, reinforcing it, making it as, hey, we don't need to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on surgery, and Panda doesn't need the weight on me hand and foot weight. Scratch that last part. Um, We don't need to get surgery, and we're now in Seattle, and now everything was supposed to go as planned, except for we just don't have to worry about the surgery anymore. Then he couldn't convince John to come back. He couldn't convince John and Howard to come back to the business, right? Couldn't use them to prop himself up. And then he he also dared the detractors, trolls, haters, and critics to try to find his new house. Didn't take long. That was like part two or part three of the of the house hunting. And Connecticut, they, 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 they're fighting it. Oh, so funny. Anyway, um, and everything essentially fell apart. He had too much, too much of this this second renaissance, if you will, of Galtopia. Uh, was was based on somebody else or based on other people, and because of that, it failed. He had the heavy workload. And the draw, if you will, to the to him, to his content, to the business, based on other people. He never actually had a plan for himself. Hence the reason why it failed. Hey, I have to get up and get ready for stream. Because I stream every single damn day. I'm here, you know, 365 days a year, I'm here streaming almost every day, putting out new content for you on YouTube. Um, I don't know if anyone else does that. Because I don't, again, again, I don't follow anyone else on YouTube. I don't watch anyone else's stuff. So I have no idea how they have a work-life balance. But basically, my life is work. Okay? That's just how it is. <sighs> now, Excuse me. That was the narrative for years, right? We don't watch anybody else. We don't have time for anybody else. We're on our own little island. There's no way he, he would understand what the landscape is of YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Because he's not, he's not, excuse me, he's not watching anybody else. But in this day and age... Not only does he want you to punk other people, or he wants you to bully other people, other content creators that he feels that are failing at boss fights, he can also tell you exactly what they're making off that video too. It's amazing how time changes. But then again, Catherine's got him sitting down watching other people's playthroughs completely cucking the fuck out of him. It's sad. It's almost as bad as when, if not worse, <laughs> uh, probably worse actually, uh, since the time that Panda used to take his car and go off and hang out with Jim and Tyrone. God damn, bro. It's just a sad situation. Mainly Tyrone. Luckily, my work is video games, and video games are fun. If this work was anything else, I probably would hate my fucking life and want to jump out the window. That's why I love this job, alright? Because it's fun stuff for work. But anyway, wh what I'm getting to here is something's got to get. Because I'm at a point now where literally with Leanna and I, we don't get to spend any quality time together. That We wake up in the morning, we see each other for half an hour, if that, to just basically wake up and snap each other out of being asleep and, you know, have a coffee or whatever. I'm immediately to work, right? I can't even sleep in ever. I'm immediately to work every fucking day. You know, most people who have an office job, yeah, at least get a day or two off. Even people who have tough, you know, uh, contracting jobs, people who work, uh, you know, retail jobs and, and fast food jobs even, you have days off. I'm here every fucking day. For the sake, I'd never get that peace of mind where, man, tomorrow, if I'm beat, I could just sleep in and, oh, yes. Or, you know, oh, man, I don't have to be on a schedule where I get this done and this done and this done. Every day, my mind is, gotta do this for the business, gotta do this, then this, then this, then this. Then Here's this. the That's thing, though. Is. One, obviously, you guys know he's full of shit. <laughs> That's, That's clear. That's clear that he's full of shit. But on top of that, when Panda said that she wanted them to spend more time with each other, he could have easily taken two days off and condensed everything else through those five days he didn't want to he didn't actually want to spend more time with her to be honest excuse he came up with excuses and reasons to not spend time with her and maybe in a lot of ways he used that as justification for her having to go out and get a job and her maybe even continuing to keep that job hey if i took off more days then you would have to contribute more to the household I don't want to put that on you, so I need to continue working. I need you to keep to continue working at the pace that I'm that I'm working, and and I need you to keep working. You know, it's the only way we're going to make it. 
So I know you want me to spend more time with you, and I'd like to. I really would, but the business ain't doing so well. And let's be honest, you know, Panda's not seeing no paperwork. She don't know exactly what he's bringing in and what he ain't. Um, she just goes off what he told her. So, you know, he has complete and utter control, essentially, of at least the narrative. And even if Panda didn't believe him, she had no choice but to go with it. Because who was she to prove otherwise? You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of a, a shitty situation all around when you think about it. <laughs> it was a pretty shitty situation all around. He had complete and utter control of the narrative. And like I say, he just didn't want to spend time with her. He went out of his way to do so. You know what I'm saying? He had his drinking. He had Twitter. He had his mobile games. There was no time for her. All day. And then people say, oh, well, Phil, you'd get more done if you didn't have that relaxation time at night. I, I need that because all day from the moment I wake up is boop, 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 boop. And then finally at night, I give myself an hour or two to, uh, to not think about that to sit there with liana maybe and watch a little bit of tv or whatever that's what i mean that's our time together we watch a tv show or two to unwind so we can go to sleep i mean it's ridiculous. uh no that's not that's not the narrative the narrative is you're up into the office until like way late at night she has to go to work so she's already gone to bed by the time you finish with the quote-unquote business you're downstairs making yourself a drink then you're watching your wrestling and then you're on twitter until you essentially fall asleep. That's what the narrative is. You said you didn't have time to spend with uh, with Panda during the week because she has to be to work the next day and you have to work late in the office. He's forgotten his own narrative at this point. Oh no. Oh no. Time to go we won't even do anything together to have any meaningful time. And I'll be honest here, you know, especially now that she's working and she has a part-time job, we see each other even less. A lot of the times she's going to sleep early because she needs to get up early in the morning for work, while I don't need to. So I'm staying up, especially because a lot of times I'm babysitting videos or, you know, I'm still, a lot of the times here I'm getting stuck in the office now. I used to have a schedule where I'd be out of, out of the office by 9, 9.30. I'm getting stuck in here till 10.30, 11 o'clock at night now. Every day, it's like this now. To the Told you. <laughs> and then another part of his narrative that we're forgetting about is that on your days off, you guys are so tired, so stressed out, and kind of, I don't know, you guys didn't really want to deal with each other that you'd be like, well, what do you want to do today? You know, honey, I don't want to do anything. I don't, I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, I don't think I want to do anything either. And you guys sat around and moped around the house and shit. You guys are absolutely miserable. So which one is it? He's literally trying to give you two stories. <laughs> He's trying to give you two stories at once. Point where it's like there's no work-life balance. We're not even seeing each other anymore. It's just a mess. It's stressful as shit. And you know, the past couple of weeks, people have been saying, Phil seems stressed out. Why do you think? This is exactly why. Because there's stuff going on behind the scenes with YouTube stressing me out. <clears throat> and it's not just YouTube. There's a lot of other stuff going on as well. So all this happening. And there's never a day to just say, okay, get away from it. Never. Never. And that's the problem right now. I'm, I'm to my, my wit's end, really, when it comes to it. And Leanna, too. Leanna sat me down the other day, and she's like, listen, this sucks. You know, we need to change something. Because we're both stressed to fuck out to the limit. She's stressed out because she's at work, and then, you know, she comes home, she runs her own business with the soap, soap making stuff, and she's cooking still. And, you know, here I am all day. I wish I could help her with a lot of that stuff, but I'm not. I'm in the office here streaming, and then I'm uploading videos, and I'm in the office working. And she even says, you know, you're here all day, but I barely see you. It's true. Now, wait a second. No. I thought you said that you and Panda were trying to share the responsibilities and whatnot. And that was the narrative that you had when you brought Catherine in. That you finally had someone who actually appreciated and respect the house just like you did. And who takes pride in, in keeping up a nice, clean uh, home. Pig pen. <laughs> and uh, it was extremely important that you guys had each other's back instead of just one person doing all the work, i.e. Leanna carrying the weight while working, while you just got to sit up here and be the lazy master pig. What about that situation? And keep in mind, though, too, it wasn't long until Leanna went from part-time to full-time. Oh, well, let's, 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 let's not jump the gun, I guess. You know, it's not like the narrative is important, right? Right? Right. Something's got to give. So we decided, we sat down, and we had a serious talk, and we said, we got to fix this. How are we going to fix this? Here's what we'll do. I'm going to change my schedule starting this weekend. This weekend coming up, okay? So as early as... Well, not only that did Leanna have the balls, but 
she controlled everything. She knew how to cook. She knew how to clean. She knew how to do laundry. She, <laughs> she had utter control of everything. Which goes, which automatically blows him, bam, right up out the water with anything as it pertains to him helping Leanna with housework. No, he didn't. Because he didn't know how to do anything. Jesus Christ, just this year alone, him and fucking Catherine are dealing with ants, dealing with roaches, and God knows what other problems they may have. Leanna may have very well been the only competent person in that crib, at were in that house at one time or another. The Snort Ford is probably uh, a less clean and sanitized place since her departure. I'm sure poor Catherine tried as best as she could, but I don't know. <laughs> the insect activity screams out neglect, amongst other things. Sunday or Monday, I haven't 100% set it in stone yet. Either Sunday or Monday, and obviously I'll announce it on Twitter when this is going to happen. I'm going to start working a little bit earlier, as in one hour earlier every single day. And I'm planning to do an extra hour of gameplay every day. So this is going to, in the long run, help. You're going to get more gameplay of the games you want to see right away. The streams are going to be a little bit longer, and people are going to be, I think, more engaged. By the way, the streaming has been going so well on Twitch. People are subbing, people are cheering, everything's going awesome with Twitch. The trade-off here is that one day a week, I'm going to be taking completely off from YouTube. There's now, no keep in mind, this idiot was saying that he didn't have a single day off. He was working every day. On Sundays were maybe Patreon videos and I think the weekend preview, which is something that he could have split up on Friday and Saturday and Saturday if you think about it. But whatever. He made it for that. And then there was like a half day on Sunday that him and Panda could spend with each other or whatever. But yet again, that was by his own design. He chose to do it that way. He chose to do it that way. All those nights he ain't stayed up till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. He could have recorded Patreon videos. And then he could have recorded the the weekend preview, which is 10, 15, 20 minutes anyway. That's an, a morning thing and that's it. That was a one take type situation. He didn't edit. <laughs> so there's the end of that. Like I said, he he found reasons not to to spend time with her. That's what it was. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't any more, he wasn't man enough to face it then. He's not man enough to admit it now. Twitch, no video, well, there may be videos on YouTube. If they are, there'll be videos that I already previously recorded and I batched up so that I could upload them and they would go live on that day that I have off. Now, the day every week is not going to be the same day because it's dependent on Leanna's schedule, her work schedule. We have to find a day that she has off, but also doesn't hinder with the game releases and stuff that are coming out so that I can work the new releases and stuff on release day. Not once in February, I'm not even lying here, did I look at YouTube views? Or did I look at ad revenue or anything? I was staying completely away from it because I said, if I just let myself play the games and not worry about stuff, no, I didn't let it get to me because I didn't even fucking look until yesterday because I figured, gee, three weeks into the month, I probably should be responsible now and check and see how things are going. <sighs> Not good, man. It's ridiculous at this point. Now, the thing is, views-wise, all right, just to give you some perspective here, views have been pretty steady on everything I'm doing. It's not like all of a sudden I got this giant decrease of viewership out of nowhere and I, it plummeted and now, you know, it's, it didn't happen. What happened is the middle of last year, the middle of 2016, YouTube changed the algorithm of how to count a view. They didn't tell anyone they were doing it, they never publicly explained it, but they changed the algorithm. So even though people are coming out and watching my videos, not all the views are counting. In January last month, it says I made almost like no money during the month. Like I'm not, like basically about a third of, no, I take it back. Originally it looked like it was going to be a third of my income had vanished out of nowhere. That third, because the ad revenue had dried up from the holidays, that in January 2017, even though I worked my ass off, I did Dark Souls The Redemption Run, I played Resident Evil 7, which everyone loved, right? Very popular playthrough, people really enjoyed the coverage I did of that game. And YouTube was telling me, oh, well, you still made a third less than you did the month before. And I'm like, this is so fucking bullshit. So but not every month is the same, and that's that's kind of his problem. Like, uh, and he still has that problem even till now. He'll have one good month, right? Like, one really good month. He, you see it a lot on Twitch. When he was on Twitch, you see the, what I'm saying a lot. He'll have one good month, whether it's tips, whether it's whatever, contributions. And then he expects every month afterwards to follow that up. Like, for example, with the King Tut situation, or King Tut Moses, or whatever. When he was getting that large influx of money from Tut, when Tut was exposed, or whatever the case may be, he expected everybody else to pick up where Tut left off. And it didn't happen. 
when he backstabbed Brightside Viking, he expect everybody else that were still there to pick up where Brightside Viking left off. Um, even though before he stabbed Brightside Viking in the back, uh, Brightside Viking ended up getting into a situation where he had to change jobs or he was in between jobs, so his contributions dipped, essentially, and DSP was hella frustrated about it, too. He was hella pissed off. And, um, which made it easier, I think, for him to cut Brightside Viking's throat, to be honest with you, and then stab him in the back. Um, he just goes into these situations. Like, with Emerald 7, when Emerald 7, when he gave him that large influx of money, right? DSP was like, you know, hey, you know, wh whoever that was, Emerald 7, yada, 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 he came through, he saved my ass, I very much appreciate it, thank God. You know, I can save a little bit of that money. And then I can use that money to take care of the other obligations, everything I have. But I need you guys to continue to step up. I need you guys to continue to con uh, contribute. I need you guys to contribute. I need you to, I need everybody to kind of put in on this or buy in on this. Because, you know, even though I got the M07 money, I'm, I'm still hurting. I'm still hurting really, really bad. And I just need you guys to come through. And that's kind of what his mindset is. Despite the fact that he's not doing anything extra to earn that extra contributions. It happened one month, or it happened for two months, or whatever, and you guys just need to keep it up. Period. Look at him as a... Look at him... Uh, let me give you guys a more recent example, I guess. Something you guys can relate to a little bit more. Um, the end of the vest streak. The end of the vest streak was a perfect example of that. When that shit fell, for the days afterwards, he tried to basically name and shame, and then he wanted people... Then he tried to... He, he was hoping that it could start over. Hey guys, we'll just start over on another vest streak, you know, 276, no big deal, we'll just start over. And it didn't happen. And if you guys remember the end of the vest streak, he was, I mean, shit, Tev, I'm not sure if Tevin was streaming that day, but I know LSB was, and um, and obviously Dark Dave Mirrors, and I think we're all DSP. And um, he literally was on, was still on, on, uh, on the stream for like 10, 15 minutes after the fact, hoping someone was going to come in with the money to save the streak. And he stayed on stream until, you know, he knew for sure nobody was coming. <laughs> and then he deleted it on stream. And he sounds so sad. He sound he sounded so sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, holy shit, dude. Like Jasper had just passed away or something. Holy shit. Absolutely miserable. Because they don't do a good job of securing ad revenue for the website. Let's face it. That's a truthful statement. Because the bottom line is, you can't just buy ads when it's easy. Oh, well, in the holidays, it's easy. Everyone wants to advertise. So it's easy because we make a ton of money. So everyone should just backload all their fucking videos to the end of the year. So they can make a shitload of money during the holidays. And then it dries up in January. So go on vacation in January. No. Fuck you, Google. How about you do some actual fucking work? And you actually reach out to the advertisers. And you explain to them you're going to have programs that are going to target certain demographics and certain group of people people based off of the information on your site so that they will pay you money to advertise even in a dead month like fucking January. But they don't do that. They're lazy fuckheads. So they just, oh well, ad revenue is always bad in January, everyone. wishy washy just fucking- I mean, his up. views weren't that special anyway. Keep in mind, he's paid through views. So if his views are bad, then the advertise then he's not gonna get good advertising. And yes, there are tiers for advertising. Don't let this idiot fool you. Not everybody gets the same shit. Nick Ricada doesn't have the same type of ads as Dark Side Phil does. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't work that way. You know what I'm, uh, I mean, shit. Let's be honest. Um, 402 Thunder, for example. He doesn't have the same fucking ads as Dr. Disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bad Boy Beeman doesn't have the same ads as um, Call of Shame. And they're in the same, they're literally in the same goddamn business. You know what I mean? Tim the Tatman doesn't have the same type of of advertisements as I don't know, uh shit. Rad Brad. Like you know what I'm saying? It just it, it doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't work that way. Even if you guys are in the same sector, it all depends on who's bringing in the most attention. It'll always be that way. That's the incentive. The incentive is those who can who produce more and can produce it better are going to have advantages. You know what I'm saying? His advantage was he was part of an MCN. But if your views aren't there, if your engagement isn't there, then no one gives a fuck. And that's what it really comes down to. That's that's how the business works. That's how the business works. 
You think him and Wings were making the same uh, the same amount of money when they were on Machinima together? You think Wings, um, DSP in in uh, 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 shit, Maximilian. You think they get the same ads? You think they were making the same type of ad money? No, <laughs> no, they weren't. He tells you that, and he's been telling himself that as cope. That that's not how it worked. That's just what he used to put one hoof in front of the other. That's not how it worked. And yet again, Machinima was overpaying him anyway. And he knew it. He just came up with whatever excuse, whatever lie, whatever whatever he could come up with to try to make up the difference. Stupid. So me, I worked my ass off in January. Great views, right? Views were up. Views in January were higher than the past three fucking months. I'm not even kidding. But YouTube, because it's January and the ad revenue's down, oh, guess what? You lost a third of your income. Now, the good news here is two things happened. <clears throat> Number one, you, the viewers, you guys. Rally. And I wonder, did, did he forget that Machinima got a piece of his paycheck? Did he forget that? Like, YouTube pays Machinima. Well, YouTube basically... Yeah, YouTube pays Machinima. Machinima take their cut, and then they throw him the rest. Did so? Did he? Did he somehow forget that? That there was someone else in his proverbial piggy bank long before he ever got to see it. I mean, they did get a percentage. <laughs> they did get a percentage. Patreon, you pledge. Actually, here you go. You went to my Patreon. You pledge. My pledges went sky high for January. It was the highest I've ever had on Patreon. And you actually made up. I'm not even kidding. You made up for the gap in income because YouTube basically sucks shit and doesn't get ads in January because they suck. But, so he's awesome. still, but what he's saying is he wants that money back. He wants the money that, he, that Patreon brought in to fill that gap. He wants that Patreon money back. That's why he's trying to get you guys the, or he was trying to get them. Excuse me, to rally together for help. He wanted, <laughs> he wanted his $1,250 or whatever exorbitant amount he said he got that month. He wants that back in spades. That's hilarious. I was, I was ecstatic. I was like, thank you. I couldn't be so happier with how that turned out because people rallied and said, no, this is bullshit. We like Phil. We want him to keep doing this as a job. Just because YouTube's lazy fucks and don't get ads. No excuse. Let's keep this going. Let's get Phil some support he needs. And you did it. Thank you, everyone. Seriously, like, amazing. Okay? Now, here's what happens every fucking year until this year. Ad revenue goes down in January. And then in February, guess what happens? Movies start to come out. And you got Valentine's Day holiday. And you've got the Super Bowl. The combination of those three things turns YouTube ad revenue completely around and you start seeing a massive influx of new advertisements around the first week of February that usually continues from February all the way into the early summer. So usually ad revenue on YouTube is fairly consistent and good from February through like maybe April or May. Then it starts to dry out a little bit again when the summer hits, okay? So, that's what should have happened. And the bottom line is, all right, Yes, in the month of February, my business was down a little bit viewers-wise, meaning about 10 to 13% less views. In fact, I have the statistic. I brought the statistics to show you guys because I was, I was, as I was looking... Wait, he just at, said that views were sky high. Now he's saying that they were down by 10 to 13%? Get the story right. Which one was it? To analytics yesterday to try to see how I was doing for the month, my jaw dropped. And here's what I saw, all right? So, that's what should have happened. And the bottom line is, all right, yes, in the month of February, my business was down a little bit viewers-wise, meaning about 10 to 13% less views. In fact, I have the statistic. I brought the statistics to show you guys because I was, I was, as I was looking. Okay, he's crying about February. Okay, he's crying about February. I thought he was still talking about January, but he's saying that he didn't look at the first three weeks of, uh, of any of his views, which, he, which he's lying. That's why he's, he apparently has done his research. And whatever the case may be, gotta be careful, man. He sends those. He'll send a. He'll slip in a phantom snort if he gets the chance. At YouTube Analytics yesterday to try to see how I was doing for the month, my jaw dropped. And here's what I saw. All right, so here's what I saw. So for the time period, 
of the beginning of February to yesterday, okay, that time span, compared to the end of January, which was January 12th to 31st, they tried to find an equivalent period of time that could be measured, my views are down about 13%, all right? Wait, That's you okay. said in February your shit's down. This is January, though. The fuck? Okay, even, even still, whatever. So let's say, he, so essentially he was down both months. But that's not true because how could, because he's still in the month of February. So how would they be able to measure it? Which is why he's saying that they're using, they would use a month that he could compare to. But, okay, champ, but this says you're on the decline. This says you've been, this right here tells me you've been dropping. This isn't something new. Dropping 13% in a month and you're supposedly still putting out the same product at the same velocity each and every month? Yikes, son. Sounds to me like people aren't watching and it's been like that for a little while. That's not creeping. Creeping would have been, oh, we're getting, you're down 5 to 7%. You're down 13 plus percent? In the span of a month? <laughs> Makes sense why we can't even pull a million views a month now. <laughs> Despite having like 60,000 60, plus videos on a fucking channel. Wow. And you want to know why views are down? It's very simple. Because at the end of January, we had Resident Evil 7. Huge. Hyped. Everyone was excited to see what this game was. It was an enigma. No one knew what this game was going to be. And when it finally was released, it ended up being really good. And it's funny because I played Resident Evil 7 for three days. And it single-handedly skyrocketed my views and my revenue and everything. You know what I mean? Can you imagine what January would have been if there was no Resident Evil 7? It was already down a third of income. Seriously. And now they're going to tell it would have been even worse, right? So... This month, February, it's down a little bit. I expected this, to be quite honest with everyone. Typically in, in February, ad revenue goes up on YouTube. It always has. There's a ton of new ads on YouTube in February, right? And you've seen them everywhere. I've seen them on YouTube. You've seen them on YouTube, right? So, what gives? Well, I look at my ad revenue, and here's what YouTube told me. This is the ad revenue statistic. So, this isn't... Oh, shit! Oh, I mean, I remember this, but seeing it brings that shit back in droves. I had, I think when I went over this video originally, not when it originally came out, because I didn't, like I said, I didn't step into the game until like September, like last quarter of 2017 was when my rookie season was. So, um, but I remember going over old videos because the lore is fascinating. Holy shit, dude, you were down 35 plus percent yikes nah views were shit views have been shit oh god dog and this is why he was still on machinima so theoretically he was still protected which means ladies and gentlemen all that bullshit about oh my back catalog brings in millions and millions of views and and yeah when i play the new stuff i there is a bit of an influx or whatever but it's the back catalog that makes me all the money i don't know champ that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like that was altogether true i'm sorry it doesn't sound like his back catalog was really pumping out much of anything at all Yikes. Playing or people who watched ads don't get has, this has nothing to do with ad blocker, nothing like that whatsoever. This means Yeah, you're right. It doesn't have anything to do with ad blocker. What it's saying is is that the people that used to watch your content are watching it less. <laughs> That's exactly what that means. That's exactly what you, what it means. It's looking at his current statistics or the current pool of people who would normally watch his content and that has dipped hurtful truly hurtful so even if one wanted to make the argument that oh well let's say he's not lying and that he does have crazy views or whatever the case may be or the views were up high and everything all those people automatically had ad blocks so those views don't mean anything because if ad blocks on he ain't getting paid but the people who normally would watch his content and engage with it or whatever less of those people are actually engaging with the content Womp, womp, womp. amount of money that I made on YouTube from this period of time compared to February. I'm down 35%. Now, More I want you to take this all into consideration. Big picture thing, right? Okay. This is what he threw his, his machinima managed partnership away for. 
because what you're seeing is the catalyst that that ended up having him run to machinima go through all these hoops and whatever circumventing all these people and eventually got him thrown off the site or got him thrown off of the off of his mcn in truth though he threw himself off because he told them in an email spiteful reactionary email as usual if you guys are going to treat me like this i don't want to be with you guys anymore and whoever it was that he was in contact with was like okay thank you fuck you bye and he was done and then he spent the better part of two months begging them to take me back you know no sympathy sympathy snorts or sniffs there no pity fucks for him and then he had to beg people to see if they could get him on another MCN, which eventually was cursed. And a third. Now, last month was bad. I'm now down a third more from last month. So at this point, I'm not even exaggerating. Basically, my income for February is down about 50 fucking percent from what I would usually make on YouTube, and I made all last year. Why? This makes no fucking sense. If this is the truth, if, in February, my views have been down 13%, then my ad revenue should be down 13%, right? Because 13% less people watch my videos, so 13% less ads reviewed, and therefore I should be making 13% less pay. Not fucking 35%. Nothing about this number makes any fucking sense at all. Any logical human would look at this and say, what the fuck does that mean? That is bullshit. That makes no sense. It would be one thing if... You were on YouTube in February, and there were supposed to be ads, and there were none. What were all the ads? I don't understand. I've seen them, movie ads playing, product ads playing, all over the place. So why the fuck did I not make any money when everyone watched these fucking ads? Because he didn't get those ads. Unless he was watching, unless he said he watched them on his own videos, which it doesn't seem like he's coming out and saying. As we talked about in the previous, in, in a previous Galtmas, he used to watch his own videos, excuse me, under the pretense that he made sure all the ads were working and were placed where he wanted them to be placed. So, I think the truth is, he was watching other people's videos. He saw them with the nice ads. He was like, well, hey, why am I not getting those ads? Or he assumed that he was going to get those ads as well, and he didn't get them. And because his viewership is down, what would make... <laughs> What makes you think you're even entitled to those higher paying ads? That's what happened. But he's definitely skewing the truth here a little bit. I wish I knew what his, uh, he was making on Patreon that previous month. That would have been nice to hear. But anyway, so take it all in. What the fuck? I wrote my partnership company, Machinima. Because I need to get to the bottom of this. What the fuck is going on? First of all, I thought maybe the reporting was wrong, okay? <clears throat> So I wrote them this notice last night. I said, I need a an answer because this is insane. How am I going to pay my bills when you're now telling me I'm making 50% less money than I used to? And it has nothing to do with me. My, my views are only down like 15, 13%. So it's not me. This 35% dip is insane. And it's YouTube, not me. Okay. So here's what Machinima responded with. First of all, as usual, I don't think they answered my question or uh, understood my question. Whenever I write to Machinima now, I basically kind of get an answer, but it's not the answer I want, and I have to go back to them three to five times to get the answer I want. So this time, they came back to me with data, and they said, well, Phil, if you look at the amount of ad impressions you had in January, and you have the amount of ad impressions you've had in February, and they did all this math, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to get into the fancy part of it, but the summary is... No, he doesn't want to get into the part where you could actually calculate and figure out what he's talking about. On top of that, too, I want you to take him, get get the noggin jogging a little bit on how sick he is. He is willing to go back to Machinima multiple times until he gets the answer he wants. Maybe they don't have an answer. This is what, this is, I want you to take this in. This is the prelim to what got him kicked off of Machinima. This is how much he was willing to nag and pester and frustrate these people. Until they were finally ready to kick him off. Please take that in. I, I implore you to please keep an open mind about that. Because this, this what you're hearing right now. These tactics that he was using. All this bitching and complaining he's doing. Is what got his ass kicked off of Machinima. Talked his ass right out of, that, out of his own contract. Hilarious. 
my ad impressions, meaning the amount of people who watched ads on a daily basis, is about the same. I didn't go down when it came to the amount of people watching advertisements in February at all. Basically, what the guy explained is he's like, well, you got to understand that February is going to be several days shorter than January. <clears throat> So yeah, you're going to have a little bit less income this month to begin with. And yeah, as you can see, you have 13% less views this month. So you're going to have that dip in ad revenue. Uh, and that was basically where he ended it. And I'm like, now, okay, so this good data, because the data is basically telling me that it's not that people, it's not that like people came in with ad blocker out of nowhere, a bunch of people and blocked every ad on my video, uh, all my videos on YouTube. And I was making no ad revenue because everyone was ad blocking. That wasn't the case. According to Machinima, the ad impressions are pretty much equivalent for January and February. So there's no change. People, the same people are coming and watching all my stuff. But for some reason, I made 35% less money. But that's not true. And are you forgetting your own narrative? You're down 13% in views. <laughs> Have you still forgotten you're down 13% in views? Did you think because you were down 13% of 13 plus percent in views, it should equivalent to 13% less in income? That's what I think he start, he's trying to go with. And it's not playing out. I don't understand why he don't get that. It's not like an ad is a one for one ratio um, to a view. Like, you know what I'm saying? If, if that makes sense. Hmm. Let's continue. That that's what there's no explanation from. So I pushed back to Mission. I said, no, thanks for that data, but that's not what I wanted. What I need to know is why is it then, if the ad impressions are the same, why am I making 35% less money? Because that makes no fucking sense. None. Now, I have just a few things to say about this. Number one, is this just me? Is this some bullshit happening to my channel only? Or is it happening and to other people? even back then, um, and whatnot, Snorpernote was, Snorpernote was right then as Snorpernote was right now. This is kind of just like fake outrage. This is him being mad for the sake of being mad so he can rally people on YouTube. That's essentially what this is. They told him, just like when he got kicked off Twitch, and they told him the reason why they, they kicked him out of the monetization. He knew... But he gave the false outrage anyway, in the hope that he could get a bunch of people to rally, go to Machinima, and be like, hey, you need to fix this for Dark Side Phil. As he's always done. If you remember the Dark Side Phil channel, he had an issue with some company. I want to say it was Ubisoft. Where like they hit him with a false flag on something. Or a false copyright strike. He actually didn't do anything, truth be told. But um but it ended up taking the dark side Phil channel down. He ended up getting a bunch of people in his audience to rally. They did. They went to, uh, I think it was Ubisoft, went to YouTube. They fixed, they basically worked it out because they didn't even know who the fuck he was. They didn't know who DSP was. Um, YouTube looked at it. It was like, okay, if it's, you know, if, if it was a mess up, we'll clear it up. They did. They removed that strike. DSP still had a strike though for some WWE, well, WWF, I think at the time, uh, some type of WWF thing he did. That he caught a strike on and he never resolved it. And um, and that's when the, the return of the king and all that bullshit. But that's when DSP started. DSP Gaming. Um, I think King of Hate Vlogs. And I think uh, DSP Street Fighter. I think that's what started the DSP family of channels or whatever the hell he was labeling it. But that's what that sprung out of. But he's always depended on people to do the work for him. It just didn't work as time went on. Other, other people out there who are YouTubers who are experiencing a significant dip in revenue this month for no fucking reason. It makes no sense. There should have been an increase because there were more and better ads on YouTube, yet YouTube's telling me I did a 35% worse. So, what? Is it me or is it other people? So, it's bullshit that this is happening with YouTube. I deserve an explanation, right? You would think that if this was affecting bigger YouTubers, they'd all be talking about it. Oh my god. Even though I get a million views on every fucking video, which is me yelling at a fucking camera, talking about, you know, talking head about some dumb fluff piece, and you make millions of dollars doing it, my ad revenue is down. You know, but you would think you would hear like, that. You, no, see, you hear him? He wanted other YouTubers to bitch and complain about it. Here, I'll bring it back for you so you can catch it. Here's the thing. If PewDiePie, for example, had a dip in income, he has someone he can talk to about that. Two... He don't need the bitch and complain at his audience about that shit. That ain't none of their damn business. That's his business, not their business. Their business is to be entertained by what he puts out. That right there, that's the other side of the game. And that's his that's his part of the game. And that he has people he talks to about that and gets that worked out. He don't need to spew his business online for pity. That's what he don't get.
It's bullshit that this is happening with YouTube. I deserve an explanation, right? You would think that if this was affecting bigger YouTubers, they'd all be talking about it. Oh my god. Even though I get a million views on every fucking video, which is me yelling at a fucking camera, talking about, you know, talking head about some dumb fluff piece, and you make millions of dollars doing it, my ad revenue's down. You know, but you would think you would hear that. No, I've heard nothing, right? Have you heard, I've heard anything from anyone saying that ad revenue is a disaster in February. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know how this is affecting me per personally. Only, am I being targeted? Is it an, is it an error? Was it a mistake? You know, is it going to be fixed? What is the deal? So I'm waiting to hear back from Machinima. But the bottom line is, I'm in a bad place, man. This is bullshit. And at this point, I've been doing YouTube for eight years. I've been doing it for a living for six. This is the epitome of bullshit. This is called a complete lack of accountability by a major corporation that basically thinks that they're hot shit. Google thinks they're hot shit. And when I see something like this, I say, this is bullshit. And I'm not putting up with this shit anymore. I'm really not. I love doing what I do. I'm not going to let myself get shut down by a bunch of fucking nerds who work for Google who don't know how the fuck to do their jobs. I refuse. It would be one thing if I totally ruined my own self here and I was here and I all of a sudden one day, you know, I was caught off camera doing, saying racist remarks and that was the end of it or something like that. You know, last year, the incident, right? That could have been the end of me. We got through that. We've been through so much shit together. In eight years, I've been on fucking YouTube. Do you really think? Okay, the fuck. <laughs> That's a racist comment. It, 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 don't worry, Phil. Don't give. I, I give you. I give you time. You know what I'm saying? I give you time. I give you more than enough rope, and I have the patience that you'll hang yourself. I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> Trust me. What can go wrong will go wrong. Fucking no at Google doesn't know how the fuck to actually enable ads properly or count ad revenue or whatever the fuck they did wrong. Do you think I'm going to let that end me? Fuck no. We're going to find a way to fix this. All right. So I'm waiting for an answer from Machinima. I'm going to pound the fuck out of them if they don't answer me. I'm going to get an answer. I want a fucking answer. And my ass is so fucking stretched out at this point, it's time to push back. <laughs> How do you like that for an analogy? So... That's pretty disgusting, to be honest. Um, dark, too, but definitely disgusting. Anywho, um, here's the, the, the question that I have for all of you who remember this, this, this time, right? If you will. Um, what made him believe... What made him believe that he would be safe? That's the thing I don't understand. He, I don't understand what made him think he could keep harassing people at Machinima and they would let him get away with it. I don't get it. For an answer that he never, in, he never ended up finding out about anyway. He never got his answer. And his answer was this. The viewership was down. Pure and simple. Because his viewership was down, Machinima was not in a position... Or didn't feel that they needed to give him the best ads that they could provide him. Because why would they? Why would they? He was a nuisance. He was a problem. And he was on the decline. And he, would, he had been on the decline, as he said, for an entire year. Actually, before... I mean, really, like... Even in 2015, even before the false copyright strikes, he was, he's was he been in a decline. He's been in, in a decline since he started making money, realistically. But he was on the down. You know what I'm saying? And Machinima tried to prop him up. There was plenty of times that he's spoken about someone from Machinima reaching out to him saying, Hey, what can we do to help you? What is this? What is that? All he wanted to do was talk about dollar signs. He didn't want to talk about what he could do to make more money. He wanted them to change their structure of their company or he wanted them to skew things on his behalf so he could make more money. Let me give you an example. Remember when that whole, um, what was the name of that channel? Uh, the one that ended up getting demonetized by YouTube because they felt that their content was too violent. Uh, was it zombie go boom or something like, something like that? Remember when, uh, let's go with that. Um, I'm not sure if that's the actual name of it, but it's zombie go something. Um, maybe. Anyway, the point is, is they ended up getting demonetized by YouTube because YouTube felt that what they were doing was too violent and whatever the case may be. And they didn't want to back that stuff up. And, uh, you know, th this isn't just some rinky dink YouTube channel. Like there's people that are actually employed there. There's people who actually do shit. And they were, they said they were going to have to take YouTube to court. 
And DSP was behind it all the way because he thought if this channel won, he could go to YouTube and be like, hey, you guys owe me, you know, you owe, you owe me back, back payment. Because you guys fucked me over on stuff too because of demonetization. And he thought he could rally all these other content creators that think that they could do the same thing. Well, one, none of those content creators listened to him, which is a smart move on their part. And two, the case, not to say that I don't even know. I wouldn't say they lost it. Maybe they did lose that case. I'll have to look now. But the I don't know if that case went by favorably. And even if it did, let's say they did win it. Even though I'm pretty sure. Sh- not that I want to wish for someone's downfall, but I don't think they won that case. I have to... Don't hold me to it. I can't remember if they won that case or not, but it doesn't really matter now. I would assume they've made their way in some way at this point. But um, let's say they did win it. How, that's not going to That's not gonna be favorable for Dark Seifel. Their situation and his situation are two separate things. But he's willing to try to mold and try to fit his situation. It's like trying to fit a a square into a circle, if you will. He wants to try to fit his situation to match their situation so he can get his way. Let me give you an even more, let me give you a modern example. His situation with Dr. Disrespect or Dr. Disrespect's situation with Twitch. He tried, he had tried since damn near day one to say him, what happened to Dr. Disrespect and what end eventually ended up happening to him were exactly the same thing. Hey, Dr. Disrespect got fucked and now I got fucked. We're in the same boat. You know, people should, you know, should look at my case and look at his case as one and the same. And it wasn't. You had yourself a, a managed partnership or you had yourself a, a uh, you had yourself a partnership on, on Twitch. Doc had a contract. Doc had guaranteed money. He didn't have to rely on just subs um, and tips in cheers he didn't have to just re- those were bonuses he got a guaranteed money he walked in there and said you're gonna pay me this much to stream on your platform exclusively and they were like bet deal and that's what he got and dsp don't want to admit that because it only makes them look as that much more of a failure not because you know and not to say that anybody who has an affiliate or just has a managed partnership is failing, but the ultimate goal is to be signed. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the ultimate goal. If you're streaming on Twitch, you know what I'm saying? Your ultimate goal is to get signed. Get yourself into a guaranteed contract with, with real money. With real money. Not this rinky-dink shit that DSP sits there and begs for online. Or that shit that fucking um, shit, low-tier god, or fucking wings used to beg for and all that bullshit. Real money. That's what Tevin's working towards. He's trying to work towards real money. Because no one wants to just sit there and just be in a partnership for the rest of your career and shit. You want to get real money. You want to get yourself into an actual secure situation. If not, why are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? Don't be wrong. I'm saying the entertainment factor and everything is there, but you know what I mean. Right? You're doing it for entertainment. You're doing it because you like it. Or even if you love it. But you're doing it to get yourself into a position to get real money. That's what it comes down to. When they offer you a contract and you can make some real money off of it. And you can really start to like secure your future financially. DSP was never going to get that. And he never did. Now, if he had stuck around a little longer, maybe he could have. But he didn't. So, womp womp. At this point, I want an answer. I'm going to fucking pound the fuck out of these guys until I get one, and it better be a goddamn good one, because I'm not accepting, oh, well, it was a, it's just some flaky bullshit. No. Because if this happens again in March, that's it. I'll tell you right now, January, that was bad, but because of your support on Patreon, it made up for it, and I was okay. All right? This month, this is terrible. This is disaster mode, because now we're talking thousands of dollars, I'm not exaggerating here, in lost revenue, and if this doesn't fix itself... I don't know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna pay my bills come April because this is the way it works is it's a two month stagger, so right now I'm making less money. I'll receive that lower amount of money in April. I don't know, and especially because guess what April is? It's tax time because I got to do my taxes in the next few weeks to month, and the first payment due is due in April. How the fuck am I gonna pay my taxes if I'm getting 
thousands of dollars less a month. This is insanity. This is fucking insanity is what it is. YouTube is about to fucking get the shit blown away from them because I'm not putting up with this anymore. I don't care if I have to make fucking videos to get people to, to come together to put an end to this shit. But I'm not going to let my livelihood get pulled out from under me because these fucking assholes don't do their job. I'm just not. Eight fucking years of my life, I'm going to throw away now because these assholes can't fucking do their job? No. I'm going to fucking... Oh my god. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out some way. All right? Now, the obvious things you can do to help. Again, I hate to be a broken fucking record and make a video like this every month. I never want to make a video like this again. I wish I could win the goddamn fucking lotto so I never have to make a video like this again and never have to mention views. I can just come in and play games casually for fun and share that experience with you. I don't know if we're ever going to get there. I gotta go start buying lotto tickets, I guess. But I digress. I don't ever want to do this, but it seems like once a month I have to make a fucking video like this because YouTube fucks the fuck up every month now, alright? The ways you can help. Number one, watch the videos. Watch the streams. But that's, I mean, duh, that's common sense. Everyone knows that. And according to YouTube, you're doing that, right? Okay, there was a 13% dip in February. Yeah, because I'm playing Neo all fucking month and the games were slow. Outside of just watching the videos and watching the stream, you can... Pledge to my Patreon, and I'll say it again. A dollar. I'm serious about this. A dollar, ladies and gentlemen, to my Patreon. If everyone who watched gave me a dollar a month, I would never have to mention this horse shit ever. Holy shit. Did you see that Hitler salute? And did you see the little jiggle that went with it? God damn. <laughs> Whoa, I'm begging for a dollar, my guy. Begging for a dollar. God damn. Even strippers have better have more integrity than that. Jesus Christ. A dollar. I'm serious about this. A dollar, ladies and gentlemen, to my Patreon. If everyone who watched gave me a dollar a month, I would never have to mention this horse shit ever again. Jesus Christ, you see that jiggle? Wow. Just just skin. <laughs> oh my god. See, the reason why I choose to cut the bacon off his back first? Because everything else is just scrawny. Ugh. Patreon, please, YouTube has put me into this fucking position. It's basically do or die time. It's emergency time. Maybe we need to find a way that I can make more money on Twitch so that it's not that big of a concern with the YouTube ad revenue issues anymore, all right? And see, this is where he fucked himself. This is where he fucked himself. How is it, right? How is it that Twitch is in pocket, as we all know? I didn't, need, I didn't feel the need to bring it up until right now. Twitch was already in pocket. Start focusing your efforts there. See, he didn't really want to. Because I'm telling you, Twitch was going to be his personal little slush fund. And he needed YouTube to stay where it was at or exceed um, what he needed it to be. But Twitch money was going to be his own little pocket money bullshit. And once YouTube started to slip and his bills were going to start to en encroach upon that Twitch money, he panicked. And ended up fucking himself out of that machinima contract. For nothing. Out of pure greed. You know what I mean? Pure greed and maybe anxiety. You know what I'm saying? And the funny thing is, his fear ended up outweighing his greed and it ended up costing him. Even though both things were in play. But his fear outweighed his greed. Which got him in trouble. And But his greed was what was driving his fear. You see what I'm saying? It's like a vicious circle. You know what I'm saying? Between his between greed and his fear. And one cancels the other one out. But one brings destruction to the other. Ugh. But one can't move without the other. Ugh. Yikes. That sucks. To be caught in that type of psychological vortex and shit. And he wants to call other people mentally ill. Wow. Can anyone think of ways... That basically I could have fundraising and or make money doing what I'm doing that doesn't involve direct ad revenue with YouTube, alright? One idea that I had <clears throat> would be like merchandise like t-shirts, like Teespring, where you can order these t-shirts as a campaign so they don't make the shirts unless it reaches a certain number of orders. So there's no initial investment cost because I couldn't afford that anyway, I have no money. Um, 
There's no initial investment cost, you know, and people can maybe get t-shirts. Now, last year, I just, it was a dummy shop that I created on Teespring. It wasn't one that was serious. I made really terrible designs on there. I know they were bad, but I just wanted to see, could I get the shop up and running? Would, you know, would there be interest? And it seemed to me that last year people were like, yeah, Phil, we'd be interested in Teespring, but not, you know, shitty designs. You got to have someone make good designs or whatever. Here's the deal. If there are people out there who are good at artwork, I mean, I've got amazing people who've been submitting some really impressive fan art to my streams and stuff recently. You know, you've seen it on pre-stream if you've been watching. If you want to make some artwork, high-quality artwork for shirts, I'd be willing to toss you a few bucks. Now, I can't throw you a million dollars. He I didn't do that. Like he didn't do that. Because there was some, because truth be told, there are a few people that, that, that do have some talent, for sure. I, I'm willing to admit it. There's a few people there that have some talent. Um, some talent that pe other people would be willing to pay for to have. DSP didn't throw them anything. Um, I think most of them just felt so bad for him they didn't want any money from him anyway. But he wasn't going to throw no money at him. If one of those campaigns, let's say one of those shirts, let's say a couple of those shirts did really well. Let's say three of those shirts sold 50 to 100 shirts a piece. I guarantee you he wouldn't have broken them off with anything. He would just came up with another excuse on why they need to make more of this art. People are loving it. I will shout the thing out, but I'm in such a bad financial situation that I can't pay you. I'm sorry. But I will shout you out. Please just make more. And they would have done it. They would have done it. Let's be honest. Because how the fuck are you going to expect him to give you money, right? When he's basically telling you that Machidima, well, sorry, YouTube is leaving him financially destitute at the moment. You know what I'm saying? You would feel like an asshole asking him for money. And he knows that. He wants you to know that. He's basically saying, I'm so desperate that I'd be willing to throw you a couple bucks if I could. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how it goes. But more than likely, it's going to go bad. At least that's the narrative he's going to paint. He's going to put out there, I should say. And so you're going to be even more inclined not to ask him for the money. You're going to feel good at just the aspect of helping him. And if you can get a shout out and maybe get some influx into whatever you're doing, that might work out. And that's all right. That's a give or take. A lot of people do that. But DSP is literally doing it to take advantage of you or to take advantage of people in general. That's where the problem comes into play. Of every sale of a t-shirt, because the whole point here is fundraising for me so I can keep doing this as a job. I don't know what the solution Told you. is here. Enough is enough. And if it comes to the point where I'm going to have to demand a fucking personal call with YouTube management to get an answer out of the horse's fucking mouth why they can't do their jobs, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to get you all the answers because I've had enough of this shit. I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm going to say, eight years of my fucking life, I worked for you. I gave you free content on YouTube, you motherfuckers, for you to have shit on your website, right? Never, you know, what, what the fuck? It's not like, uh... It's certainly not like they put out their own content to make their fucking website popular. I was one of the people who spearheaded the raw reactionary style Let's Plays on YouTube. A lot of the shit that you see now is derivative of my work. And I'm not giving up on my business after eight years. I refuse. These motherfuckers are going to figure out what they did wrong and they're going to fucking fess up because I'm not. I refuse to go away when I didn't fail. Uh, and the truth is, he was the biggest deficit against his own business. Beautiful. Sad. Rather pathetic. Unnecessary, certainly. But beautiful. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take a small uh, music break. And we'll be right back for uh, video number two. <laughs> oh, sorry to laugh at someone's expense, but you knew it was going to go bad. You knew that whole thing was going to go wrong. You know what I'm saying? And how he thought it could go right makes no sense. But yet again, he's a reactionary individual. He's a reactionary person. You know what I'm saying? And that's where his problem is. And at least in some ways, that prop. And then the fucked up part about it, actually, let me, let me take back my almost previous statement. Not only is he a deficit to himself, but he's a deficit to everybody around him. And he don't care. He don't care. He really don't. If anything, just like I said in the last episode, um, he needs to be in distress. He needs to be at a deficit so he can keep people invested in him. 
And if he has to hurt other people to make that happen and to keep it going, he will. How is that not sick? Let's play the game! <laughs> Sound good? So the question I'm gonna answer actually was from a troll. A troll who was trolling another four or uh, other threads. We found out his IP had been it was the same person that had already been banned from the forums. Oh, <laughs> we're still looking for people's IPs, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. <laughs> still, looking, still looking up people's IPs, but we never did that. He, there's no way he can look up your IP. He can only see your email address. That's what he said about his site. We all know how that played out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Snorper now. DSP, uh, DSP Gaming. Uh, ask the pig, salty answers, and uh, salty answer in planning to live with his lady friend in 2018. This is from December 22nd of 2017. The link, as usual, will be down in the description. Let me go ahead and bring up. Let me go ahead and bring that thing back for you. You know, because we're looking up people's IPs and shit, right? So you know, it is what it is. That'll do. Uh. I think that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. All right, here we go. Oh my God. Sound good? So the question I'm gonna answer actually was from a troll. A troll who was trolling another four or, or other threads. We found out his IP had been the same person that had already been banned from the forums. But he actually asked a pertinent question attempting to troll me. But the question actually is a question that if I answer it is gonna have completely the opposite effect. You go to your fans for things like donations and tips. Bill's a beggar. 
That's true. I do. How would, well, I don't go for donations. I go for tips. Tips is not donations, by the way. Completely different. Classified different by the government. Classified different by the taxes. They're tips. They're not donations. No one donates this money to me on stream or anything like that. But anyway, how would... And I don't know if he was using that as a pretense to not report his tips because he likes to equate himself to a waiter or a waitress or a bartender. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we all know somebody who's been a waiter or a waitress or a bartender at one time. And not, well, I don't know. Everybody I've ever known who was a bartender... They had to report their tips because <laughs> they pulled in bread. <laughs> they pulled in bread, especially um, a lot of the females that I know. They pulled in a lot of money in tips. Ridiculous money. Talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars a night. Easy. Easy. Like you, 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 ugh. 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 <laughs> to the point where, for example, for example, uh, at least two or three friends that I had that it was like shit if bartending pays this well then there's no even worry about fucking stripping or anything you know what I'm saying you're typical you know what I'm saying paying your way through college type thing but bartending well and that and they were good at it too they were really good at bartending you know what I'm saying and they were really nice people so it's easy to make a lot of money but shit when, it, when you gotta choose but when you have to make a choice between okay I could start dancing or we could just do this bartending thing. You must be making good money. and what, But they definitely reported their shit, though. They definitely reported it. Jesus Christ. You can't get away. It's not like some fucking diner out in the middle of buttfuck Egypt and shit. Where, you know what I'm saying? Where you're making nothing. And it would, doesn't hurt anybody for you not to report anything. So, make of that what you will. But yet again, excuse me, that pushes the narrative along on whether he actually reports his tips or not. Who could say? Yes, people. P, who gave everyone who took donations back then a tongue lashing, perceived the 2018 DSP. And if 2018 DSP could talk to 2012 DSP, what would you tell him? All right. All right. Great. Let's be an honest answer here, because this is not how you think. You In 2012, I was very verbally critical of people who took donations. And I said, listen, if you're a YouTuber in 2012, and you're not making ends meet, and you're trying to do this full time, and with things how they are now, if you can't make a living doing the way that it is, and you have to ask for donations constantly and interrupt your, your content to have plugs and sell products constantly, all right, you're doing it wrong. By the way, I really desperately need the money to help with my tax situation. So, hint, hint, save the house. <laughs> okay, and that's what I said in 2012. Guess what? I still agree. In 2012, ladies and gentlemen, the climate of YouTube was way different. In 2012, ad revenue on YouTube was in fucking sane. It doesn't matter. Okay? It was. It doesn't matter. People wanted different revenue streams because they, because people didn't know if it was going to last. Like that's the that's the narrative. Like that's the point. No one knew if it was going to last, and guess what? It didn't for some people. You know what I mean? Or you were going to have to work harder, or you're going to have to work smarter, or you're going to have to diversify your content. Just because it was good that one or two years for you, three years really. He had like three really good years, and then after that it was downhill. Just because it was good for you those few years doesn't mean it was going to be like that forever. But this is the same idiot, ladies and gentlemen, who said, and I quote, <laughs> that he was planning on being on Machinima for the rest of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and let me give you an IRL uh, equivalent to that. This is the same idiot who wanted to sit there at his papa's company, not at his dad's company, but you know what I mean, at the helicopter company his dad worked for, and was okay with being customer service for the rest of his life. He thought he was going to keep that job for the rest of his life. Never had any intention of maybe, I don't know, moving over to another company that may pay more or may give him better opportunities, may allow him to travel, may give him a better chance of moving up. No, 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 no. We wanted to be right under daddy's thumb and ride daddy all the way to the top. No pun intended. Jesus Christ. Shit. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? That's what he wanted. He wanted to ride his father's coattails, I should say, all the way to the top. That was the plan. You know, his father ain't already put 20 plus years into that bitch. If I can ride his goodwill all the way to wherever, to wherever, that's exactly what he was going to do. So this idiot would rather go to a place and just sit there, even if he's stagnant. He'd rather just sit there and deal with it because at least he's got that much security. Does that sound, does that not sound familiar? And that's the reason why he failed. So his 2012 
analogy is stupid. It's stupid. Because there was no way the company was going to be able to sustain itself. Machinima didn't. Machinima made changes. They did cuts on his ass. Because it didn't take them long to realize, but it took them long enough, that uh, they were paying him too much. And he couldn't produce. Not in the long term. Insane. Ad revenue was at its highest ever in early 2012. Okay, and the people who I were criticizing, I wasn't criticizing the little Joe YouTuber who didn't have any audience and now he's asking for donations so he can afford to buy games to continue on with his channel. I was criticizing big YouTubers who were as big, if not bigger than me, who I knew how much money they were fucking making on YouTube. That was, I'm going to tell you right now, four times more than I make now, it was a lot of fucking money. Okay, a lot of money. For those people to be telling you they needed donations was dishonest. It was a lie. And I'm not going to name any names. I have two YouTubers in particular who back then, they were up and coming YouTubers and they were starting to blow up on YouTube around the same time that I did. And they were constantly saying, here's my PayPal, send me money. And I was like, dude, your videos are getting hundreds of thousands, if not more views. You're making crazy money on every video you fucking put out. And you have the audacity to ask your viewers to donate. Now, I okay. knew first Okay, he's going to have to eat a dick all over on this one. Um... Because his wife is busy right now. So here's the situation. One, when DSP DSP had his vlog channel, right? So all those, so all that nonsense he likes to talk to you about, about, oh, I did YouTube gaming for three years and I couldn't make no money on it. He was making money on his vlog channel. On top of that, he was promoting his PayPal channel. Or sorry, PayPal channel. Sorry. <laughs> he was promoting his PayPal. Matter of fact, the reason why DSP gaming made it made it to, to anything or became anything is because he was collecting donations on PayPal to pay for games. And he's been doing that. You think he just shut his PayPal down after he start once he got a machinima and started making real money? Nope. There's people still sending him donations. He don't want to admit that to you, but that's what happened. People kept sending him donations. It never stopped. So then years later, he decides to open up a Patreon and get money off that. That was after he moved. So trust me, the same thing he's trying to criticize people for, he indulged in too. Because when people, when he was asking for help for views, when he was begging for views, when those people who were able to watch all his videos and, and binge watch or whatever the case may be, when DSP used to make, say, this is my business and I really need you guys to engage and that wasn't enough, would you think they did? They went to the sidebar on his channels and were like, oh, I can give money to his, um, to his PayPal. And they did. So nothing. So what the fuck makes him any different from anybody else? The scenes how much money I was making. And I would compare myself to these YouTubers and be like, that's so fucking greedy. I but the thing is, he's money. stupid because he wasn't because he wasn't making what they were making, and they weren't making what he was making. He assumed that they were, but those people were probably well, depending on who he's talking about. Um, I'm thinking one of them is Ally is uh is Ally Joe or sorry uh, Angry Joe, Ally Joe. I'm thinking of actually Long Island Joe to be honest with you. Um, but that's FGC. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but um. I'm thinking one of them was Angry Joe. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. But uh, even still, you know, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he was brave enough to call him out, but either which way, the money wasn't, the money was cut up differently back then. Way different. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody was making the same type of money. So keep that in mind too. But it's funny, Cal, he keeps telling you he wasn't pocket watching. He, he didn't care about what other people are doing this and a third. Well, this right here is a direct contradiction to that. He was pocket watching just like he accuses other people of doing them. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. I got paid for your stupidity. I love it when I see the stupidity. And I even said back then, the only time that I would ever ask you guys for pledges, donations, uh, tips, would be if it were a situation where just YouTube ad revenue was not good enough to allow me to keep doing what I do. And that's exactly what happened. I moved across the country in 2014, and then all of a sudden, giant revenue dip in 2014, 2015, and I said, the only way I'm going to be able to keep this going... It's a scam. Give their money. Give their money. Then that's all I care about. But I just find it's so hilarious that people still fall for this shit. 
is if I have Patreon. So I adopted Patreon. And then this year, again, YouTube ad revenue went crazy low for everybody. I said the only way I'm going to be able to, to do, keep this going is if I leave the YouTube-only model and become a full-time streamer and have things like cheers and subs and tips, okay? No, I'm not 2012 DSP rolling in fucking dough and then going on stream and saying, please send me tips and send me donations. I mean, he's me still lying. He didn't move to the Twitch only model because it was an option. It was it he didn't actually have an option. He had gotten himself kicked off of Machinima. He went to curse, but he was making less than what he was making on Machinima. So he had no he really had no choice. But he was planning on going to Twitch anyway because yet again they had all the different monetization op options. And yet again, it was supposed to be a slush fund. It wasn't supposed to be actual income to go to bills or his obligations. That was supposed to be extra, extra, extra money. You know what I'm saying? YouTube and Patreon were supposed to carry the day. So he got forced into a bad spot. But he put himself there. And that, keep in mind though too, when he went to curse, a bunch of his videos got demonetized. Because a bunch of them got flagged for shit. Let me give you an example, actually, of some nonsense he said recently that equates to what we're talking about now. DSP was able to put little snowflakes falling on his videos now in his little pre-stream bitch made podcast. You know, this is really cool, guys. I can actually do this now, guys. I didn't realize how far OBS came, you know, these days, guys. It's super easy to add stuff to, you know, add elements, if you will, to, you know, to, to my videos and my streams now, guys. Look at how far I've grown and I've innovated. In actuality, he could have done that shit back then. There was people who've been telling him since he likes to use his little fucking sound box that there was a lot of there was a bunch of people, myself included. I, I said it on my own videos. I'm not going over there to say this shit. Fuck him. But <laughs> that you can take a sound, you can find the sounds on YouTube, you can download them, and then you can just go ahead and put it into OBS. And then he has a uh, what is that called? He has a stream deck. Right? He says it doesn't work for his current thing. He's full of shit. They update stream decks all the time. Yes, it will work with his current setup. As outdated as it is. he Especially now that he has a new laptop. Anyway, he can go ahead and uh, macro all that to a stream deck. The thing is, the thing is, DSP isn't smart. And he knows he's not smart. And he's damn sure not smart when it comes to learning shit. So he's scared that he's gonna that he's going to macro it wrong. So it's easier just to have the little sound box because he can control it. He knows it works. He knows how it works. It's in hand. If he presses something on his stream deck and it leads to something that he don't want to be shown, he's proper fucked. And he knows that. And he's scared of it. So unless someone can sit there and walk him through it, he's going to get screwed over. And you know what's funny? Catherine could probably walk him through it because she used to actually stream. Does she have a stream deck? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But she definitely probably had an Elgato. So she could definitely probably show him how to use it. Because she certainly isn't using it for nothing. Never thought about that. But anyway, now he's talking about all the different things he can do now. And all the different stuff he could add or whatever, whatever. And he could have been done that. And then on top of that, on YouTube, he has access to all these different sound effects. That he can download for free. You know what I'm saying? Anything he can essentially want. You know what I'm saying? From background music to whatever. Yeah, and I know most of you are like, well, wait a second, man. You don't... What about the music you choose? I, I like what I like. <laughs> I'm not saying there's, there's not fire instrumentals on the, on the free shit that YouTube has. I haven't gone through that music catalog. I'm going to be honest with you. But I've heard some of the elements on other people's videos and whatnot. Yeah, there's some fire shit there. I, feel, I know that, but I like what I like. So even if I was monetized, I'd get demonetized because I like using fucking copyrighted shit. Eh. It's a sacrifice you make for your creativity, I suppose. Anyway, um, the point being is that there are elements to his at his disposal. But he's the one who supposedly knows so much about the goddamn business, and you can't tell him nothing. And that's the reason why he's at where he's at. And that's the reason why he will always be behind. He'll always be behind the, his peers. He'll always be behind his competition. He'll always be behind the detractors, trolls, haters, and critics. All of that. And all of this stuff that I'm talking about right now is either on YouTube, right? Or it's on his it's on his dashboard. I can pull it up. So if I can pull it up, I know he can. Whatever.
that's nuts. I couldn't, I still to this day cannot believe these two people who I used to see on YouTube asking for my. I feel bad for the fucking people who sent those for them money. <laughs> Unbelievable. There are people on, on YouTube and Patreon, folks. I couldn't believe this too, okay? Their videos on YouTube getting hundreds of thousands of views on every video. They then had Patreon campaigns send us on a European vacation. But, oh, it won't be a vacation because we'll have a meetup in every country. We'll have one meetup in every country that we hit. So even though it's really literally a paid vacation across fucking Europe for us, uh, we'll stop and have one fan get together in every country. And so... Flo kind of I know vloggers uh, back in his day used to do that. Uh, to be honest, I know vloggers definitely did campaigns like that and got a lot of money. But I got to tell you, some of the, the footage they got from some of the different countries they went through was insane. Like some of the early women on Instagram, right? Um, that's how they were paying for those photo shoots with a lot of these absolutely amazing photographers who were in, in Italy that were in Spain, that were in France, that were in all over Europe. You know what I'm saying? That's th that's how they got the money to get from point A to point B before they ended up getting under these modeling, uh, getting into some of these modeling agencies and all of that. That's one of the brilliance of fashion. I think it's called Fashion Nova or whatever. You know, that main clothing brand that all of those women usually wear, whatever they're sponsored by and whatnot. Um, that's how they got hot, essentially. Because you had all these women who were trying to model off what they have. And Fashion Nova would come in and be like, hey, we'll go ahead and go ahead and we'll send you like five outfits and just, you know, just just model it and whatever the case may be. And then put the link to each one of those outfits in your description or whatever, whatever. And they would because they're essentially getting free clothes out of the situation. And then later on, they got discounts, major discounts off of that stuff later on. That's why, that's why Fashion Nova blew up the way it did and whatnot. That's why people still promote the shit. Not shit, but you know what I mean? That's the reason why they still promote it. So then these women could go out there on those different trips or whatever, and most of the stuff that they're modeling was Fashion Nova. And then they would mix it in with some of the, obviously, the more trendier brands or whatever the case may be. But that's how Fashion Nova blew up the way it did, amongst other ways, of course. Um, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like people really pulled their resources together and whatnot you know what i'm saying it was really interesting how they did it so when you looked at vloggers vloggers did the same shit you know what i'm saying imagine you throwing 20 30 dollars at someone who's gonna go someplace that you may never get to see but you can kind of live through that through their video you know what i'm saying especially back in the early 2000s that's not something uncommon that's not something uncommon at all that's why the vlogging scene is still extremely profitable and extremely popular. You know what I mean? Even though now, I mean, shit, you can, you can, they have sets. <laughs> you have, they have sets that you can go to and act like you're on like a first class or whatever the case may be. And you can literally take pictures there and charge you. I don't know how much they charge you for it. It's affordable because everybody does it uh, for the most part. And um, that's how people get themselves noticed on Instagram and shit. There's a difference be between you having four likes and 4,000 likes. And then there's a difference between you having 4,000 likes and having 40,000 likes. There's a big difference. And now, Fashion Nova, for example, is one of those situations where once you get up to a certain spot, they're kind of, they're, you know, once you get to a certain number of followers or whatever, and you got a certain amount of impressions, don't be surprised if a contract offer starts to come in. So, you know what I'm saying? It, but that's all part of the overall business. He can shit on that all he wants. But that's how shit gets done now. My problem is, and most people's problem, is he's a hypocrite by sitting there saying and bitching about stuff like that when he's done the exact same thing in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? He may have not have done all of their practices, but most... Jesus Christ, he, he was stealing people's... Um, <laughs> he was stealing people's tournament footage... So he could use the money off ad revenue to go to other tournaments and steal their footage. And if he could have, and if that scam, that little scheme worked, he'd have gone to Evo. He would have poached every bit of footage of big matches that he could before Evo could put out their DVD or put it on their YouTube channel. He'd have poached all that shit. And if you're going to do that, then fucking idiot. Why didn't you keep DSP Street Fighter up and available? And... 
could go to this whole thing about him screwing up DSP Street Fighter. But to make a long story short, the reason why DSP Street Fighter ended up getting debunked or defunct is because Machinima came to him one day, did a contract negotiation as usual, and they were telling him that, hey, we're going to pay, we're not going to pay you the same amount for DSP Street Fighter as we are with DSP Gaming because the DSP Street Fighter hadn't, it didn't have enough attention and it wasn't getting enough attention to make that happen. So instead of working hard at it, he went ahead and just comboed all of his gameplay footage of, D of DSP Gaming and DSP Street Fighter all on one channel, DSP Gaming. And in turn, killed DSP Street Fighter and then essentially became overbearing for DSP Gaming. And that's how he fucked him himself up. Two minute pieces of match footage just... 50, 60, 70 of those damn things being uploaded a day when that could have gone on its own designated channel, could have gotten built up he could have put all of his fighting game news up there, that could have been his own poor man, broke man Jedi mind trick um, equivalent, not equivalent <laughs> definitely not equivalent, sorry, but uh, variation of Maximilian, that could have been his, street, his fighting games channel and who knows how far that could have gone but he pissed it away because of greed. And because Machinima wouldn't pay him the same amount that DSP Gaming was making for that channel too. And that was the reason why DSP, uh, DSP Street Fighter got fucked. Because he was greedy and he was stupid. And then he had the nerve to sit there and say, Oh, if you guys are getting all these videos flooded into your, your, uh, your sub box, that doesn't have anything to do with me. That's YouTube. They need to fix how that shit is presented to you. No, just... Just stop uploading so much goddamn footage at once. How hard is that? Like it's for the fans. And people funded it. These these people who make so much dirty money, thousands of dollars on fluff videos, no fucking effort. And why is the money dirty? How is how is money that people are transparent about? Like, hey, I want to go on this trip and whatever, whatever. If you want to donate, you can. How is that dirty money, but you begging and saying that your parents are dying, you're, you know what I'm saying, you need to go out and visit them, please get send me money so I can do that. How is that any less or any more dirty? How is it any less dirty, certainly? How is that a thing? This guy has blatantly lied in multiple situations to get people to donate to him, but he wants to be pissed off because some vlogger said, hey, please donate to this right here so I can take some type of trip to wherever. Which one is more transparent? Which one is more honest, and which one can you actually prove? The vlogger, more times than not, can prove what they what they said the money went to. Maybe not all of it, but they, <laughs> but they can prove where, where the majority of that money went, especially if they actually went. DSP can't verify shit. He can't verify that his parents were really sick. He can't verify that he was going to miss out on such and such amount of money, which... The fundraiser he took before him and Catherine left to, to get married wasn't going to be enough to sustain, let alone what he made the week before that. He can't, he cannot verify that he's going to lose his house. He can't verify that this business, which isn't really a business, that's a business, but it, it isn't really a business until 2018 when he got hit with, well, 2017, when he got hit with the back state and business occupation tax. He can't verify if that shit really is going to fall apart if he don't get this Patreon money each and every month. I want you to think about all that. He can give you every story in the fucking book on why you should give him money. But he can't actually prove to you that the consequences if you don't give it to him will actually happen. Because no matter what, coming out of his own snout, no matter what, he's still going to be there the next day doing what he supposedly loves. So how much, how much trouble is he really in? ...put into these videos, then got a free paid vacation. I look at that shit. That's the stuff that I used to speak up against, all right? Because that's gross. I really, 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 really need your support right now, folks. I really need the money to keep this house. I need to raise a lot of money this month. I'm going to need your guys' help. I really am. I'm going to need your support. I need it. Greed is massively strong. I have no fucking self-control. That's gross misuse. All right? 
of your viewer base and your fanship. And cannibalism, all right, it is. It's just disgusting. If I could get down on my hands and knees and still be on camera, I would do it. Okay, I seriously would do it. Anything for this, right? Now for me, it wasn't until 2015 that I ever asked for a penny from anyone. When I started up my Patreon, I created free videos. So, basically, that makes you a hypocrite then. Because you said something three years ago and then you had to come around to it. I don't give a fuck if your situation changed. You shouldn't have bashed it. And you shouldn't have bashed the people who did it. Ever. Ever. That's like a detractor taking shots at other detractors who do this for profit or make money on doing it. And then later on down the line, they do it for profit too. It makes them a hypocrite. You shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have said it. Because you must feel like an asshole now that you have to do it. For example. You don't knock it. Because you never know if you have to come back and do it. You can sit there and try to make up whatever fucking excuse that comes up in your head about that bullshit. About three years later or whatever, whatever. And I'll argue with anybody on it. You shouldn't have said it. Because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. And that's why Darkseid feels a fucking idiot. He shatted on them just because he thought he could. And then how's he look groveling like a bitch three years later? Live streams from 2018 all the way until 2015. Excuse me. 2008. I screwed that one up. From 2008 all the way until 2015. It wasn't until two years ago that things got so bad on YouTube that I had to start asking for other contributions. Everyone fucking else asked for them before me. There are YouTubers right now. That's not true. YouTube. Yet again, as I said before, back in back early on before he quote unquote could actually make money off this gaming shit, he always was asking for donations through PayPal. You know what I'm saying? And you guys remember that when he did his face unveiling and when he lost his job. He pumped all that quick, and that was 2010. And people were sending him money while he still had a job. When he had a job, he was still asking for money through PayPal so he could buy all the games and everything. So he can go ahead and take all that shit to fucking divorce court. Who have 20 times more views than me that have a fucking Patreon, all right? That's disgusting. I'm nervous. I'm really, I'm, I'm nervous. No lies because I need the money. Right now, with this whole tax situation I'm in, I need the money. I need to sit back and laughing my ass off at how stupid these people are. And the fact that people would fucking pledge to that, it, I mean... Guys, and I'm being real talk here now, I know. And people don't like it sometimes when I get real talk. Oh my god, too bad that's what made me a name on YouTube. It's time to get real. I'm in a situation right now with taxes. Hey, I didn't I know he was promoting the Wings of Redemption podcast long before it actually happened. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, I'm in a situation where I was paying a tax attorney for six straight years to do his job, and for three years that I lived here, he didn't. He lied to me and didn't do due diligence. I now owe so much back taxes that I don't know if I'm going to be, ever be able to pay it unless I sell my house. That's fucked up. So when I come to you and I say, please pledge to my Patreon and make a monthly goal. <laughs> this idiot, this buffoon, said that he owes so much in back taxes that he would have to sell his house to pay it off. Yet, in a previous Galtmas, we've t he sat there and said, I owe thousands upon thousands of dollars. Not tens of thousands of dollars, but I owe thousands upon thousands of dollars. Now he's sitting here saying that he would have to sell his house to clear his debts. Wow. It's, it's almost like I planned it. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But maybe I did. I really need the funds right now. Please tip me on the stream so I can raise enough money to keep my house. I'm being real with you, all right? I'm telling you the truth. I'm not a YouTuber who's rolling in dough where every month I make, you know, $20,000 on YouTube. And then I have the fucking audacity and greed and balls to ask you for patron donations and tips and shit. My girlfriend, it's it's Darth Radovan Viking with a wig. Get it tonight, baby. Delicious. Oh, my God, yes. Ooh. Oh, 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 God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. Like it getting destroyed. He also likes anals. I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. Totally gay. That shit is disgusting. I'm good at lying. <laughs> it's like that's, uh, it's the rich getting richer.
That's like me, right? That's like me. You know? And I'm sure those people are real pleased this year with these new tax cuts that just happened because their taxes are now going to go down and they're going to make so much more money. It's just like nuts to me. I mean, I'm barely, barely making ends meet here. I know you're lying. And I got to get shit from someone like this troll who basically the reason they asked this question was to say, See, Phil, you changed. 2012 DSP would have made fun of 2018 DSP. 2012 DSP had no debt. 2012 DSP was rolling in money from insanely high YouTube ad revenue and said... That's not true. He had credit card debt still. Yeah, he his one of his first YouTube uh, paychecks uh, helped pay down a lot of his credit card debt like he had uh, approached on, um, or accumulated, I should say, during his FGC days. But he'd been paying down credit card debt for the longest time. For the longest. YouTube helped pay it off, but then he reoccurred it or reoccurred uh, yeah, it reoccurred it all over again. So, don't get that twisted. He's been had debt. <laughs> He's been had debt. Because if he really didn't have any debt, he would have actually saved. You would think. But DSP don't believe in saving either, so there's, there's, there's that too. For people in my situation to be asking for donations and tips and shit. 2018 DSP may lose his house in the next couple months because I got fucked. By some asshole in Connecticut. And I got fucked by trolls over the past three years who fucked my business over and made my YouTube revenue plummet. And I got fucked again when YouTube ad revenue plummeted earlier this year because of YouTube's mistakes. I, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. <laughs> you know, that's the difference here, okay? Very different. So your, your question literally backfired and just proves my fucking point. That there are people out there that people throw money at who don't need it and fucking are hoarding it over here in some fucking offshore bank account and or living it the fuck up. I mean, they get to go to every fucking con gaming convention. They get to, you know, they pay, you know, full ride and everything, pay everything. They get everything for free from sponsorships, rolling in money, but they still have a Patreon. They still get tips and shit, but God You don't know where their money goes, to be honest. And I'll, I'll give you an example of someone... Who kind of fits that criteria, but not necessarily. Um, take Courage, for example. That dude essentially uplifted his whole goddamn family through YouTube and Twitch. He opened up doors and opportunities for his family that they may have not have been able to do otherwise. He essentially shouldered all of that shit. And he's put himself and in, in them in a better position. Now, I think he's dating or whatever, but, you know, he was a, he was a young dude. He was by himself and whatnot. He was doing other things and whatnot, and he turned his hobby into his main source of income, into his career. See, this is just a job for DSP. There are people out there like Courage, like Ninja, like Doc, like Shroud, like Timmy, Timmy Tenders, or... <laughs> um, you have... Uh, Shit, you have Z Laner, all those people. They turned this into their career. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, those people have obligations. They have families they need to take care of. They have brothers and sisters that they can now send to college. They can pay off their families' homes as well as buy themselves a home. He don't look at it that way. He spends his money on all this frivolous dumb shit. And doesn't actually grasp what people actually do when they're put in a position financially um, to be able to uplift themselves and the people that are around them, the people they really care about. You know what I'm saying? He don't get it. And he'll never get it. And that's why he begs, in some cases, without shame. Because he don't understand. He was making crazy good money, like I said, for a few years. Do you think he ever spent any of that money to, hey, my, well, I, I assume his parents had their home paid off, but like, you think he could have, he could have sent them on vacation somewhere. He could have helped pay buy. he could have bought his family all new appliances. He could have done all that. No, you know what his dumb ass did? He went over there every fucking Sunday, collected his stipend, even though he was making more money than his father was and criticized his family for not having a nicer house, not living in a better neighborhood, not having better appliances. That's what he did. Instead of buying them those new appliances, buying your mom that new fridge, that new stove, maybe you paying to do some renovations in their house, in their kitchen, or maybe their front porch, or whatever the case may be. 
he had the nerve to go over there, collect money from them that he didn't need, that he'd been collecting from them since he got fired from the helicopter company, eat their food, and then criticize on how they live. Why are you in this fucking neighborhood and shit? Why don't you move out of this neighborhood and move into a nicer house? Well, if you feel so much about that shit, why didn't you put a down payment on another house? Oh, that's right, because you were too stupid to be even to be able to pay off your condo. You couldn't. You weren't even smart enough to pay that off. Let alone you have the right to criticize your family who actually paid for their house. You've had a townhouse and a condo, and you haven't paid neither one of them off yet, and you may never will. But at least your at least your father had enough responsibility to pay off his home. He made sure your mother didn't have to worry about that. How are you doing with your wife, Phil? Oh, that's right. She downstairs crying. She's downstairs crying because she married an idiot who's known for jacking off on fucking YouTube in front of a bunch of kids. She's married to a fucking idiot who has to beg online every day to make ends meet so they can afford their DoorDash. She had she got married to a fucking idiot who could possibly lose that house at any given time just as quickly he had lost his managed partnership on Twitch or lost his contract on YouTube. Yeah, I guess she do got a lot to cry about, huh? I guess she do got a lot to worry about, huh? I guess all that all that time that she put in busting her ass at whatever job she's working at, I guess that ain't really paying off for her, is it? Who is the same as you, who pays for games just like you, who literally is just trying to keep what I've been doing from 2008. Never had aspirations. <laughs> Since I'm feeling like an asshole, he didn't pay for all the games that he got that year. People sent him game codes, or people sent him money to buy games. When, I guess we don't speak on that though, right? We gotta keep this... We have to give up this... Keep doing this broke man example or, or this broke man's version of the average person as the average gamer who doesn't have any privileges whatsoever, right? Not like he just sits on his ass in this bootleg fucking setup that he's got begging people for money and people actually giving it to him. I never saw Angry Joe do that. To be some big wig never thought that I was better than anyone else. That's right. This is the United States of Phil. I am the supreme being. I make the rules and what I say goes. Uh, this is not a place for you to stand on your soapbox and complain about censorship and freedom of speech because the bottom line is you don't have freedom of speech. This is my land. <laughs> Someone like me ask you for some support during the holiday season because I might lose my house. I'm the villain. You think I'm the villain? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm a horrible person because 2012 DSP would have never done that. Get the hell out of here. I'm not a whiny baby. If anything, a question like this from a moron just proves what a moron, immature troll this person was. Why am I toxic? They're not an adult who understands real fucking life that you couldn't even understand that maybe in six years, the climate has fucking changed. Get the fuck out of here. But I want, I need to stay here, man. I have to keep this house. I can't. I can't lose this house. I gotta work my, I gotta save it. Somehow, whether it's... I thought he said he was gonna work his ass off. Oh, we had to go ahead and cut that part off. He needs you guys to place Captain save a ho Home talker, right? Oh, I'm just gonna say it one way. And hopefully you'll believe it, even though that's not the truth. And that's literally what's happening here. The guy's a liar. The guy's a fucking blatant liar. And lying to everyone. But... People are believing it because they don't know any better. It's, it's gross. It's for this. It's not about the money. It's not. Me working my ass off with the generosity of whatever it is, luck, pure luck. I win the fucking lotto. I gotta stay in this house. I have not spoken a lot about this, but last year, half the year sucked. Half the year was good in regards to my personal life because of my girlfriend. My girlfriend, it's, it's Darth Redivan Viking with a wig. My girlfriend, I, I met her. During the summertime, she was able to visit me several times. I had a lot of fun with her. I really, you know, we really get along to the point where we both have jobs and everything. And I want to be able to maybe have her move in here with me during 2018. What? This is a sick fuck. <laughs> Barely know this woman sitting here and saying that he's going to lose his house, begging for taxes, try had three visits from his girlfriend and trying to move her in. Sick fuck. <laughs> Oh, 
What? 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 What the fuck? Are you fucking serious? What and the, the rest fuck? of the board goes on <laughs> Whether it's sooner or later, I don't know. It's all going to depend on his tax situation. But that would be my other resolution. If I can make it happen and maybe we can move in together. You know, she could get her foothold here, start working. I could have two incomes again, helping with everything. We could have a great life together. Um, Thumb to the door, that second income. <laughs> kind of getting back on track because, man, did 2017 throw me for a fucking loop. All the negative shit that happened. And I need to get back on track 2018 positive because... You know, I can't keep having, wow, something great happens. Oh my god, life-changing, horrendous thing happens. Oh, okay, we're kind of at, oh my god, another negative thing. I can't, I gotta have things level out, man. Stress and everything, stress levels, I need things to level out. And that's what I really need, I need. I need th that money, I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing if, like, she could move in with me, and things work out well, and now we're back on track for positivity. But let's see what happens. So those are my two resolutions for 2018. I'm salivating at the goddamn mouth. Shout out! Oh, <laughs> uh, Ponage 101 took me $5. And I'm $5 richer, so thanks, moron. Iridium Viking, who used to be Darth Radovan Viking, who used to be Brightside Viking, who used to be a million other things. Viking did 110 bit cheer. He said, Here, have a bit, Phil. Thank you, Viking. And by the way, Viking, I will say this publicly don't worry about the trolling that people constantly do to you. Again, last night someone tried to troll you. Uh, I guess because you were on another stream or something. I don't know. I don't care what you do in your private life. I'm going to say this publicly to everyone. I don't care if you're a viewer of mine. All right. What you do outside of watching my streams and or what your contributions are to me. I don't care. You are all independent, intelligent humans. You are all very well. Oh, let's cut stream. that bullshit. All right. It's a Mr. Huff stuff video. And I think it's called Pick a Side. I know I've gone over that video before. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, essentially what happened was, is one of DSP's donators was on another, was on a detractor stream or some shit. He was laughing it up, having a good time or whatever. And because it's the Gaudi Gestapo over there, there was someone else from DSP's fucking circle and shit, his inner circle, the Gaudi Gestapo, that was actually keeping tabs and watching him. And then they went and reported back to Phil on everything the guy said and who he interacted with. This isn't the first example of something like that happening. But this is the one that DS. This is one of the few times that DSP actually called the guy out on stream, and said, "You got to pick a side, man. You're supposed. To, you're a positive person over here. You, you know, you, you, you donate and you, you give me money and you, you're, you're, you're really helpful and, and you know, you, you're, you're a real positive person in chatting, man. But then I'm hearing you're over there fucking around and chilling with these distract with these detractors. What's up with that, man? You can't play both sides, man. You got to pick a side. You got to pick a side. And the guy told him he's like, and the dude told him." Hey man, I'm having a good time over there too. Why can't I just, why can't I just contribute here and then hang out over there? And DSP was basically like, no, you need to actually choose. Those people are over there slandering me. They make fun of me. They do all that terrible stuff, and you're just over there hanging out, and that's not cool. You got to pick a side. Womp womp. And you're also very welcome to go watch anyone else's stream and can participate in any other stream in any way that you feel fit. I am not some kind of a, a, a greedy person who thinks that you're only allowed to watch my streams. You're only allowed to contribute to my stuff. If you feel the need to contribute to someone else or do something else, why on earth would I ever hold that against you? But sadly, there's people out there who are trying to troll you guys. And some people are trying to basically find people who like contribute to me and then say, Oh, did you know that he also does this and that? I don't care. That's none of my business. All right? It's not. You guys, I would never intrude upon your private lives or your personal business, ever. So, please feel free to go do whatever you want. And even if these idiots are stalking you, I ignore that shit. In fact, that idiot that tried to troll Viking last night, I banned the fuck out of them. So, there you go. Rest assured, I respect you guys, and I'm very appreciative for everything that you guys do for me. That is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in my goddamn life. <laughs> Viking did another 200-bit cheer. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Oh! Easy to eat. Oh! Phil's a faggot. Phil's fat. Phil's a loser. Phil's a beggar. I have a micro penis. <laughs> Alright, I'm not dead, but I swear to God, I wish I fucking was. Yeah, I don't know why it cuts it off at the end like that. That's unfortunate. Well, I like said if, if everything goes well, then maybe I'll fix it next year. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, small music break. We will go into our last video. 
And then, uh, you know, final thoughts, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's uh, easy peasy. See you guys in a second. That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Ugh. Excuse me. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And in Indeed. particular- All right, ladies and gentlemen, for our third and last video that will make up uh, our Galtmas, <laughs> uh, we are here, yet again, Snorpernell DSP Gaming. The eternal game of blaming detractors. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. This is from July 4th of 2018. The link, as usual, will be down in the description. Here we go. Guys, if you're wondering, gee, what's the way that I can help fill out the most right now? The answer is tipping. Tipping helps me out tremendously. Those are funds that I can use right away to pay bills and the like. I need that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. Please give me your money. And very, very, very true that uh, I need your help right now. That's constantly begging. I beg all the time. I may be, I may be living month to month, paycheck to paycheck, begging for fucking tips and shit on stream for the rest of my life. Because these early week to two weeks of every month, all my bills clear. And in particular, you know, things like my mortgage, my utilities, my credit card bills, everything clears at once. And it empties my bank account all the way out until I get my payments for YouTube and Twitch, which don't come until about the middle of the month. So, any tips you give me right now help me out tremendously. I'm going to put them straight to my bank account to pay bills, alright? Phil's always been a beggar. Phil's just a, one of the worst e-beggars. Disgusting beggar. You know, a lot of people today criticize me and they say, Phil... You advertise too much on your pre-streams. Phil, every once in a while, you have to... He called advertising begging. Now, I can't remember if... I'm pretty sure Twitch was on, like, the 21st. And then YouTube was, like, on, like, the 24th or the 25th. I, I may have that actually in reverse. Um, One day I might find out. But um, I'm, I can't remember. I may have that in reverse. But um, I'm pretty sure that the YouTube payment came first. Or no, Twitch came first and then YouTube. Pretty confident. But actually, I don't think it was that close. I think Twitch came in on like the 15th. And then I think YouTube was somewhere between the 21st and like the 25th. That might actually be closer to it. Yeah, because Patreon's on the 1st. Twitch was like the middle of the month. So like, let's say the 15th. And then YouTube is like the 20. Is either like between the 21st and like the 25th, something like that. Someone in the comment section will set me straight as it pertains to that uh, that situation, but something along those lines. Um, so if you think about it, and then constantly begging for tips every single day, he ha he's essentially flushed with cash, quote unquote, every day, and he couldn't figure it out. He couldn't he couldn't do right. Just amazing, <laughs> just amazing. And then one more thing I want to. I'd like to declare before we move forward. Remember, our first two videos are from 2017. Now, we're in the middle of 2018, and to be honest with you, yet again, could be just because of my pseudo-genius, but it all flows together as if it was all just day by day by day. 
Wow. Ask for help from your stream viewers. Why are you an e-beggar? Why did you do that? I would have never been in this position if it weren't for the shit that happened to my YouTube channel. Shout outs! <laughs> so we start out with the Lord Land V3, who cheered and said, I specifically remember in this playthrough back in 2009, you actually stopped donations as you no longer needed them. And the trolls still say that you're- And it's purely for the money. I told the truth, like I always do. Uh, well, I remember correctly, when I first started on YouTube, okay, when I absolutely first started, way back when, um, it was a hobby. I was, I had a full-time office job. Um, and I think when I first started, I may have been accepting donations. I don't remember. I got you, bitch. I, I got you, bitch. I told y'all. I told y'all. Now, when I say I got you, bitch, I mean the pig, not, not, not y'all. But I got y'all. I, to I told y'all. I told y'all. I told you he was collecting donations day one. That's how we paid for games. That's how we did a lot. He did a lot of things with that money. He did a lot of things with that money. But games and peripherals were kind of the main thing. And he could have gone to direct to capture back then. Chose not to. He could have done a lot of things back then. <laughs> uh, divine sniff. I specifically remember I shut that off at one point. And I said, I'm not going to accept any donations. <gasps> oh my god. This shocks me. It didn't Bottom happen. Line. It didn't happen. I'm confident it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm confident he didn't shut down that PayPal. That PayPal was always active. And like I said previous, when he was begging for views and whatever and whatever, and if someone really wanted to go above and beyond, they probably just went to his PayPal because that was already ingrained into them. Hey. Excuse me. I know how I can help Phil. I can throw him a couple of dollars... On not Patreon, sorry, but on his PayPal. I can just go to his PayPal and throw some money at him. It was on all of his fucking profiles. It wasn't hard to find. So, womp womp. Is, I, I'm never going to ask for anything unless I need it, okay? I know you're lying. I'm good at lying. <laughs> I'm, I'm hypocritical. And that is actually the truth. If you actually follow uh, my history... As a content creator on the internet, uh, from the years of when I first started all the way through 2014, actually I take that back, it was 2015, when I opened up my Patreon account in early 2015, okay, so that's what, you know, I was started out in 2008, so that was seven years that I never ex really accepted donations. Now, people sent me stuff over the years, they sent me gifts, they sent me games and whatever, but it was never anything that I actively asked for, and I never had a PayPal where I accepted donations or anything like that. I never had any Patreon crowdfunding until I absolutely needed it in 2015 when my channel saw a very sharp decline. How is he going to admit that, yes, he did have a PayPal that you could accept, that he could accept donations when he first started to now saying, I didn't have a, pay a PayPal at all? How do we do that? How do we make that jump in logic? Let's bring that back real quick. Just in case he was talking about Patreon and I missed it, which is possible. Later on the internet, uh, from the years of when I first started all the way through 2014, actually I take that back, it was 2015 when I opened up my Patreon account in early 2015. Okay, so that's what, you know, I was started out in 2008, so that was seven years that I never ex really accepted donations. Now people sent me stuff over the years, they sent me gifts, they sent me... Do we have to go back to when he first unveiled his face, when he first, uh, when he first unveiled his face, when he got fired, when he had, it was like, is either his 50 or 60,000 sub, um, celebration. And it was also the celebration of Modern Warfare 2. I did that video for the Fight Club channel, um, or, uh, Golden Triangle Gaming 2nd Edition, um. I went over that, and he talked about how helpful donations were, and where you could continue to to bring them. He's blatantly... He admitted that he actually had a way of giving him donations when he first started, to lie and say now he, he never had a way of doing it. Because it wasn't Patreon. Fuck off. Jesus Christ. Games and whatever, but it was never anything that I actively asked for, and I never had a PayPal where I accepted donations or anything like that. I never had any Patreon crowdfunding until I absolutely needed it in 2015, when my channel saw a very sharp decline, because it was actually that particular year, 2014-2015, when YouTube changed all their algorithms, so that basically it went into engagement and length of your videos, rather than how many people actually watched your videos, to determine how you got into YouTube. Oh yeah, that's, and that's one of the things that um, I haven't had a chance to bring up, but that's what really proper fucked him 
when they changed how ads work on your on your uh, on your channel or you know what I'm saying like how monetization work where you went from a view base to actually AdSense that's what or to ads I should say that's what really screwed him over and he's never been able to mentally adjust just like he hasn't been able to adjust from the move from the east coast to the west coast big ups to the homie hate army because he has a video that completely and utterly uh, backs up my my whole Din Din uh, argument. Now, granted, uh, I've had that well established for a number of years, but I appreciate him coming through and having a homie back and and whatnot, and actually found the uh, the video where DSP explains that. Matter of fact, if I remember, I'll have the editor put that down in, in the description and whatnot. Um, so you guys can go ahead, <laughs> so you guys can go ahead and laugh at it because it's funny. It really is funny. But going back to my point, DSP never adjusted. He never really uh, uh, simulated himself into the idea of fucking. Hey, I don't get crazy monies off of people just clicking on my videos anymore. Now they have to engage with an ad. So womp womp. But it doesn't matter because we've already caught him in a couple of lies so far. So why not go for a few more? sharp decline in viewership from 2014 to 2015 because of this okay and so then i was like no real talk if i just moved out here to washington i got a house and everything that i'm trying to maintain and now i got a big decline in income i need something to supplement that and that's when i opened up my patreon for the first time so for seven years i never really accepted donations at all um and the bottom line is i would do that again if i was in a position where i didn't need it like for example if for whatever reason, I don't know, I hit the lotto, okay? I obviously would shut off all, everything. There wouldn't, I would shut off all donations if I hit the lotto. I'm not going to take your, take money from people and stuff if I don't need it. But sadly, what we've seen over the years is the complete and polar opposite of that happening. Instead of me becoming in a better financial position, sadly what's happened, YouTube has been on a monstrous decline. Year after year after year, more bullshit. False copyright strikes hurting my channels, uh, you know, in a big, 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 big way. Um, big amounts of slander and defamation against me on the internet. That obviously makes it turns off newcomers from coming to check out my content, despite the fact that those who actually do come watch my stream say, wow, this is actually very different from what I expected from those negative videos, and I enjoy it, and I'm going to hang out and, and watch Phil from now on. A lot of people are just shocked at how different it actually is to be here on a fun stream, right? And then, of course... Got no proof of any of that. On top of that, though, um, I have to disagree with Storm Pernell to an extent. I think if DSP did win the lottery, he would still play games on YouTube. He wouldn't play nearly as much, and he wouldn't play nearly as many. That's what it really comes down to. He's not going to play nearly as much, he's not going to play nearly as many, and he's not turning not a goddamn thing off. He's going to be like, hey guys, I'm well off now, I am taken care of, I have, hopefully, God willing, if he's smart enough to, to go ahead and pay off his house, pay off all of his debts, put some money in the goddamn bank, all that. But he's going to be like, you know, I'm in a much better position now, I'm doing this literally for fun. I am taken care of financially, but I will, excuse me, leave PayPal open. I will leave, um, uh, if he was still on Twitch, <laughs> I'll still leave all the monetization on Twitch and I'll still leave all the monetization on YouTube as it pertains to ads. And if he's streaming over there, all the different ways you can contribute to him, I'll leave all that on. It's an option. I won't bring that up, but if you want to, please do. If you want to interact with me, have a fun time then this is a way of doing so but i don't need it now right but then he'll start saying and then as time will go on oh well you know i could use some help with games oh i could use some help with this oh some medical bills have come up oh i need to financially help my parents now oh i'm gonna need to do this so if you guys still want to send me money i would appreciate it because he still wants to be compensated for his time even if he won the lottery he still wants to be compensated for his time so, so hell no, he's not turning off monetization. <laughs> He'll just figure out another way to convince people to give him money. It just won't be, he won't need as much, but he'll still always have a need. You know what I'm saying? That's the point. He'll always have a need. You can't, he can't shut that off. We had the YouTube ad apocalypse last year where their ad revenues literally were halved. They lost a lot of their giant advertisers. And it's just come to the point where you cannot be a let's player anymore like I am and, and make a living on YouTube. So we've had to turn into these more interactive streams and the rest is history. I actually think my content now is better than it's ever been because it's interactive and fun like this. False. 
wrong, incorrect, negative, no, nay, absolutely not. But yeah, now obviously, I, I, I'm accepting all kinds of different, you know, contributions and donations, because really it's crowdfunding is the future in my opinion. You know, YouTube's method of, oh, just put ads on your videos and make a living off ad revenue is done. I don't think it's, it's really viable anymore for anyone but the big, big dogs out there. For all the rest of us, to be successful, it's going to have to be crowdfunding. People who just enjoy what you do and want to help you out via, you know, different methods of support. All the different ways that I have, you know, Patreon, Teespring, cheers, subs, tips, and all that, right? It's disgusting in my opinion. It's immoral. So, there you go. Um, but yeah, it, it was a long time that I never actually uh, accepted uh, any kind of contribu contributions. Uh, until I absolutely needed them, you know? And that's how I am. That's the kind of person I am. Disgusting beggar. I would never be, like, doing pledge drives and shit. It's crazy how he blatantly lied about that when he actually admitted that early on he did. It's amazing how he turned right around and said that he didn't. That, that out of out of one of the few things that shouldn't have actually I wouldn't say I'm stunned that should have sh that shouldn't have shocked me it should kind of shocked me he did that lame ass shit that, that that's clearly a bald face lie <laughs> and he already admitted to it as such and still try to write it out like he didn't wow hell hope uh from you guys at various times you know right now I'm saying. Oh, you know, tips. If you tip me today, it's the best way to help me. God's honest truth, you know? I'm not making that up. Okay, where's the evidence? Present evidence of what you're saying. There's no way you can just lie, 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 and never have a fact behind it and expect this story to hold. Right now, financially, everything is tight. And every month, my bank account gets emptied down almost completely and it's to the point where I'm risking overdrafting. And when you guys tip me earlier on in the months, it helps me out tremendously, you know? I don't just make this shit up. This is something that is, you know, true. And, I mean, eventually, would I like to get into a better position? Absolutely. But I'm, I'm kind of at the whim of a lot of things. I'm Again, I'm still at the whim of YouTube. YouTube is saying we don't want people like Phil anymore. And, you know, the different seasons of gameplay. Right now we're in the summer, and it's dead. There's going to be no major new releases. So I know that the people who influx here, when there are new releases, the people that come in and will contribute and sub. For example, last month, Detroit Become Human and Street Fighter, when I played those two games, I had 100 new subs out of nowhere. Now, all those subs have gone away because those games are over. You see what I mean? So it is what it is. Um, and, uh, you know, that's life. Things change. You know, that's one of the one major things that's changed in nine years is that, yeah, now I am... Disgusting pig roach beggar... And see, here's the uh, thing, yet again, as I said previously, if he didn't bash it, if he didn't bash it back then, he wouldn't be looked at as a hypocrite now. But let me, let me further my argument. The reason why he bashed them back in those days is because he was trying to send a message. He wanted people to be discouraged of those people. He wanted those people to be looked at as fake, as frauds, even as criminals to some extent. So they would gravitate over to him. And it didn't happen. So basically, he put himself out there. He humiliated himself. Didn't reap any of the benefits. Now, years later, he's trying to emulate what they did. Not getting, not getting nearly as much money. Or at, or, or nearly as much res, um, support. And now, he's being bashed upon for it. Like I said, he should have kept his mouth. He should have kept his mouth shut and stayed on his supposed island by himself and actually put out good content. Maybe if he did that, maybe he wouldn't look, be looked at as such an asshole. Maybe doesn't matter. You know, you know, dependent on your guy's support to keep going. It's just the truth. You know, things have definitely changed, but I still love what I do. I love begging. All right. Um. Wow. Boy, do I see some of the most ridiculous misinformation in my stream chat. Just sell your other house. Oh my god. Do I really have to get into this again? I'm not going to. I'm not going to waste my time. I've only explained 400 times that I owe way more on that house than, than it would be to sell it. And I have no way to sell that other house. I don't want it. And I can't get rid of it. And I can't rent it. I've tried a million things. And I'm stuck in a fucking endless money pit over there. And now we got people saying I'm driving a BMW, which is completely false. <laughs> Unbelievable. Toxic toilet juice. Cheered. If I could get down on my hands and knees and say thank you and still be on camera, I would do it. 
okay? I seriously would do it. Mexicano Cartel tipped me $5. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. And said something in Spanish. I'll read it in Spanish, and then I'll tell you what he said, because I can read Spanish. He says, Ayúdame, estoy en el desierto y quiero un agua. Por favor, es muy importante. Huh? Huh? Now what he said was, Help me! I'm in the desert, and I need water. Please, it's very important. <laughs> now, I was gonna say, Oh, that's the top tip for the day. However, I received an anonymous $100 tip. A cult, again, a mindless cultish person. These cult mentality people. I'm pretty sure we all knew that it was about a... Some kind of a fanatical cult. So thank you to whoever that was. Obviously, that's very, very generous of you. Okay, last Rambo just did a 50-bit cheer and said, what are the list the list of debts that you still have to clear? In reality, uh, the list of debts is crazy. I mean, I got all kinds of stuff. I got loans in my name. I got mortgages in my name. I've got credit card debt. I've got a, a lot of debts, all right? There's no way that I would personally go through these and outline these for you guys. Because yeah, it didn't matter. A few short years later, we found out. But he had a lot. <laughs> 13, 14 credit cards. <laughs> got a couple of business loans out there. Oh my god, just all kinds of ridiculous shit. And to think that... The thing that he thought he... The idea that he thought he could just keep juggling it, right? Keep juggling all these accounts and all and, and shit, and then got mad when he couldn't open up other credit cards because his credit wasn't so good, clearly, and whatnot. It's, it's, I'm surprised he didn't dump some of that on Panda's credit. That's my... That's the thing that got me fucked up. I'm sure... He got her to take out at least one business loan, but the fact that he didn't, that he didn't swarm that girl with credit cards, blows my goddamn mind. I gotta tell you. Your business and number two, uh, you'd probably crap your pants to find out how much money I actually owe, due to the fact that I had so many financial obligations and responsibilities when I moved out here. And uh, how much was it for the bankruptcy? One hundred and forty thousand dollars. Right? Something like that, right? Like, like between 128 and 140 plus thousand dollars. Yeah, that's quite a bit of money. <laughs> that's quite a bit of money. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, still don't have his, his condo paid off yet. Never paid off the condo in Connecticut. Still hasn't paid off his car. <laughs> I'm telling you, he don't believe in paying people. He doesn't believe in paying for stuff. Like, when he pays his daily bills, or his monthly bills, it I think it makes him sick. I think it makes him mad. It makes him mad that he has to pay for his electricity. It makes him mad that he has to pay for cable and internet and shit. I honestly think it pisses him off. I really I really do. He doesn't want to spend it. And it's not even because he's stingy, or he's thrifty, or um, he's shrewd. It's none of those things. It's just he just doesn't want to pay people. He doesn't. He feels that he shouldn't have to. That's how far his entitlement has brought him. Crazy shit. Income that I made declined so sharply over the years. Like right now. No exaggeration. I'm probably making about half as much money as I did when I moved out here, and that's not good. All Phil ever does is talk about money. He just sits on stream and talks about money all day. I can't sit here and outline every single debt that I have. Just know that I have a bunch of them, okay? Uh, right now, my, my major concern financially is taxes because I've not been able to pay any federal taxes yet this year, and that means I'm behind. By the way, hint, hint. Save the house. Help! Save the pig. <laughs> what the heck? A pig with a party hat. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Piggy. The secret piggy. Save the pig, the game. The whole game, you're trying to save the pig's life. Hell! Shout out to Third Eye the Third, who cheered and said, Wow, the Seattle Online Broadcasters. Association has 800 plus members. Everything of connecting with new streamers that way, grow your channel at the same time, help others, and make IRL and online friends at the same time. Uh, do you really think that anyone is going to want to associate with me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was dumb enough to. I know that might seem like a low blow, and it is, but it's true. 
I mean, she, 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 she tied her. I mean, she is the horse, but you know what I mean. She tied herself to that, to that cart, or that wagon, if it, it's really a wagon. She, I'm just saying, she did. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is what people seem to realize is that because of the amount of toxic people that sadly follow me around constantly, I can't get sponsorships. I can't get, uh, I mean, shit. Last year, I was set up to be in a part, a new partnership with a company on YouTube that was going to put me in a managed partnership, and they wouldn't even, they couldn't even take me. And it's not my fault. Like, it, it'd be one thing if people were like, "Wow, Phil, you know, you really have a bad rep because of these nasty things you've done on the internet." This is the God's honest truth. It's the complete opposite. Fuck that, Phil. You are a dirty, rotten liar, a silver-tongued talker, right? Oh, I'm just going to say it one way. And hopefully you'll believe it, even though that's not the truth. And that's literally what's happening here. The guy's a liar. The guy's a fucking blatant liar and lying to everyone. But people are believing it because they don't know any better. It's like, wow, Phil, you have a bad rep, not because of things you've done, but because these sick people who follow you around and just fucking attack the social media accounts of any company that tries to associate with you and just do really nasty shit in particular. Uh, to everyone who associates with you. Why on earth would anyone in this broadcasters association want to be associated with me? That is uh, probably <laughs> the most silliest thing I've heard in a while. So... Do you want to play the fucking game? Uh, yeah, this is what you guys have to understand. When it comes to me, I am an island. And I didn't set myself up that way. That's just how it turned out. And so really... I can't really go for other methods of things that other people do. Other streamers do this. Other people do that. I can't really do that shit. Uh, because of these nasty people that follow me around and screw with me. So, you know... It's That's not actually true, um, to be honest. A lot of it is, is his own doing. He has shitted on... He, I mean, I call him the internet's toilet. And it's certainly a title that he's earned. But he's also... He's kind of like a pigeon. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't fly high, because he can't, because he's lazy, but he flies high enough so he can shit on everything. You know what I mean? He thinks he's an eagle, but he's not. He's he's a pigeon. He's a, probably fair to say he's a vulture, but vultures are opportunists, and they are more than likely successful. More often than not, he's not. So he gets to be a pigeon. Um, and, and, you know. Pigeons aren't stupid. You can train a pigeon, but pigeons do die in dumbass ways. Anyway, he's a pigeon, and all he does is just shit on everybody and on everything. That's all he really does. That's all he ever really could do. And no one wants to be... <laughs> no one wants to interact with that. Everybody wants to watch it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody watches the trash fire, but no one ever wants to interact with it. You know what I mean? And that's the... That's the, the thing about Dark Side Phil. There are celebrities out there that would pay for the type of publicity that DSP gets on a daily basis. And DSP can't capitalize on it. For not a single solitary second. There are people. Uh, let me give you just a, a. I'll try to be you know quick about it, but let me give you just a broad scope of how well Dark Side Phil is known. <laughs> Dark Side Phil, believe it or not, is is well known and laughed at amongst uh not just gamers but even of athletes wrestlers have heard of this dude i mean you guys have seen these examples though right like they everybody has seen some type of meme before you know what i'm saying it's a thing right actually for example someone was asking me because i told you guys early on that um uh, that i've heard on very good authority that, the, that at Capcom, uh, DSP provided some pretty good laughs in some of his footage with Chris G. Now, is there a screenshot of any of that? Was I even privy to that particular conversation? No. But I've heard on very good authority that that is a thing. And I believe it. It's not going to be like a, like, a, like a GDC type situation. 
You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of match footage that comes in. There's a lot of match footage people watch. You know, just to get a vibe of what's going on, especially amongst pro players. And DSP is a shit stain as it pertains to the FGC. There are a lot of people, not a lot, there are some people that DSP has had a beef with at one time or another that work at Capcom or who have gone through those doors. And those people, unlike Phil, can keep friendships together and shit. You know what I mean? Just silly, crazy stuff. And, um... <laughs> there's been some funny... There's, I've heard some really funny shit. That's all, that's all I can say. I've, I've heard some really funny shit. Um, and then, as you guys have seen over the years, different wrestlers that on their streams, for exa uh, example, were laughing at him and whatnot. Adam Cole was probably a great example. <laughs> he had a good laugh on that and whatnot. And as you know, Adam Cole's cool with a lot of people. So, you know, saying AJ Styles hasn't had a laugh over it. You know what I'm saying? saying there's a, you know what I'm saying? Shit gets around. When you have something funny, shit gets around. It just, it happens. Um, but that's how much of a laughing stock he's become. And he can't capitalize on any of it. Not at all. And I'm not even talking about going out there and doing collabs or anything with it. I'm talking about being able to retweet that shit and, and just having a good laugh with it. He can't do it. His ego won't let him. You, you know how many people wish they could get a fucking backhanded shout out like that? Fucking A. You know what I'm saying? To be able to put a name to a face and shit? And this idiot can't. Even Wings doesn't get that type of recognition. Low tier God doesn't get that type of recognition. Not that heavy. You know what I'm saying? Because he's just far too negative. That and apparently he a cupcake in public. You know what I'm saying? And whatnot. Sweet as, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sweet as bubble gum and shit in public apparently. And whatnot. But uh, that tough guy shit he play at home or whatever is just that. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people in the FGC who can contend to that. And in public, you know what I'm saying? He's a nice and respectable person. You know what I'm saying? All that crazy shit, all that talking about, you know, black people all silly and all that nonsense. He don't do that shit in public. He don't do that shit in public. Because he knows not to do that shit in public. There are repercussions behind shit like that. He know it. He can spew that shit on the internet all he want. But in public is different. And it's because he wants people to try to see the separation, or at least he did. It don't matter now. But the fact that so many people in the FGC are talking about him being gone is crazy. And what's even more crazy is the fact that Ernesto, Ernesto Lopez, check, ch fucking button check, check these buttons. The one with the really cute wife and shit. This dude wants to do an interview with fucking, he would be, he'd be willing to do an interview with low tier God to talk about that situation after all the beef they've had going back multiple years. That's crazy. My that's crazy. Like you would think I would have thought that button check would have been the last person who'd want to, who'd want to talk to low tier God about anything. But you know, I mean at the, at the same time though, too, it's a, it's a good opportunity. Um, or it would be a good opportunity. So, Especially if low tier guy can't get his YouTube bag, especially if if uh, if the screenshots that are floating around are true, saying that you know YouTube on Twitter made the decision that low tier God is permanently banned. This is all hearsay. Okay, I saw a screenshot and another uh, as the thumbnail for another video. I didn't actually get a chance to watch the video, so I don't know if it's true or not. But if it is true, he's gonna have to try to reach out to anybody and everybody to get his story out. Because no one gives a fuck about Twitter. Not like that. But there is a lot of people in the FGC that are kind of like, oh, wow. Low tier God's actually gone. Because they're, you're used to him just being around. They're used to him just kind of being there. Even though he's not able to compete pe uh, competitively um, on the circuit because he's still banned. You know what I'm saying? You're used to... There are people who are like, yeah, I'm used to just kind of seeing a video or two of his in my inbox. And now it's not there. No one's losing any sleep over it. No one's crying about it. It's just like, damn. It's just weird not it's weird not having it. I don't know if Dark Side Phil even has that type of recognition if he ended up getting bumped. Which goes back to what I said earlier about well, a couple of broadcasts ago, that uh the detractors, trolls, haters, and critics have complete and utter control over his legacy. You know what I mean? If DSP leaves the internet tomorrow, there, there really is no loss. You know what I'm saying? Low tier God, people are like, wow. Like, 
like he's really not here. No one's crying over it. No one's no one, no one cares that much. It's just it's just that wow factor. Like holy shit, he's he's really not on YouTube. Damn, did that boy really get banned? Damn. I don't even think DSP can drum that up. Absolutely. Would I like to be in a group of other people who we could all support each other? And yeah, but I can't. You know, I just got to kind of shrug and say it is what it is. Just continue on doing what I'm doing. Oh, here we well, go. Well, there's a reason why for that too. You can't be in a group of DSP because you can't trust them. And that if you're doing well, if all of you guys are doing well and he's not doing as well as you, you know in the back of his head he's sneak dissing you. He's treating you bad. Let me give you an example. Just a second though. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Had a cheered and had a suggestion. He said, Phil, hope you're doing good. You ever think instead of uploading streams to YouTube, you could sell the streams? You'd make a great profit for those who couldn't show up to the stream and could still help you. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Sell the streams. How on earth would I go about doing that? Um. <laughs> Pay us more money, idiots. One thing that I've always enjoyed knowing is that people can watch my stuff whenever they want for free. Okay? Yes, there are ways you can support me and contribute if you want to go above and beyond. But my, my content is free. That's what makes it popular, is that you can come watch and hang out with me on a daily basis. It's just like having a friend who you want to hang out with and play games with or whatever, and interact with or whatever. It's not like, oh, this is some big wig guy who you gotta pay to get in the door. It's some exclusive fucking club where you have a, a cover charge to get in and see what all the hoopla is about, right? Um, and I have people who have supported me since the very beginning. So, since the very you're proud because they don't have to pay at the door, but they essentially have to pay before they sit down? Okay, if you say so. I mean... <laughs> If you say so. Very, very, very beginning. All right. And they've always watched my stuff on YouTube. I wouldn't want all of a sudden now to say, well, oh, well, sorry, guys. Uh, you know, even though you guys are the ones who made me popular and you guys are the ones who have supported me over the years, I'm now dumping all of you. You know, that's why I'm still on YouTube and I'm still uploading videos to YouTube, despite the fact YouTube demonetizes a ton of my videos and YouTube really has just declined, declined, declined. I'm st still there because there are major amounts of people who want to see me for free on a daily basis and i'm not going to change that formula now if there was something exclusive like for example oh early access you could see the videos one or two days early or something that would maybe be something i would consider that shit i'm going beast mode ah let me fucking unleash the beast you feed feed me more feed me see more feed me this kind of shit needs to come out. This kind of shit needs to be exposed for what it is. It's greed. It's greed. Greed is massively strong. I have no fucking self-control. But I haven't seen anything uh, to that effect on YouTube. Like, at least from what I've seen, I didn't see any feature or anything to do something like that. Um, but outside of that, no, I would never make it so all my videos and streams are now private only unless you pay money to see them. I don't think that's right. I am one of the most prolific people out there. I don't know, it doesn't sound like he minded being behind a paywall. At least some of it, anyway. I put out more hours of gameplay than most other people on the planet Earth. Oh my god! Oh my god! What was that? <laughs> what was that? That was the messiest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. What the... Fuck! Oh my God! What the fuck? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Anything for this, right? I wouldn't do that. So it is an interesting suggestion. However, I don't see that it's viable right now. I would definitely like to do that, uh, or, or consider that. Consider doing something like early access or something in the future. But right now, I'm not aware that it's viable. Okay. Shout out to Third Eye the Third who cheered again and said, "Well, I understand." I mean, spot truth be told, the real reason why he didn't do it is because he's he was afraid he was afraid that a detractor would buy in, wink wink, <laughs> would buy in and then uh, distri distribute it uh, distribute it for free, which yeah, more than likely that would happen. Hey man, a good Samaritan has to be a good Samaritan.
don't want to ha uh, deal with you, but individual people are more understanding. A decent person wouldn't care your ac uh, about your accident and all the other crap. Third out of the third, that's not what I'm talking about. Phil, the infamous multi-time masturbator. I literally, I don't think you listened to what I said. The problem is not when it comes to having any kind of relationship with me. The problem is not what I've done. I, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. It's not me. It's the trolls. You're absolutely right. People don't care about my fucking accident. That's silly. That's silly crap from over two years ago. And if that was gonna, you know, destroy me, it would have destroyed me two and a half years ago. Whenever it happened, um, you know. It wasn't it, about destroying you though. It was about making you. <laughs> It showed that you were a fucking idiot, as if people didn't already know that. And you're a laughing stock, and you're someone to be pointed and laughed at. You are someone to be humiliated. That is something to be held over your head, and you'll never be able to live that down. That's what it was meant for. It wasn't meant to end you on the internet and whatnot. I mean, the fact that you did it in front of kids should have implemented some type of response, but whatever. It is what it is. I hear justice run slow. So, that's what it comes down to. I mean, at the end of the day, the fact that you... It, it has to hurt him more that he has to endure it. <clears throat> excuse me. That he has to endure it than if it actually <gasps> took... Excuse me. Took him out the mix right away. It, it, it's war he, He's living in his own personal hell because of that. Because that's one of the things that he's known for. And he'll never be able to shake it. That's fucking hilarious. Even that girl on Twitch... I think... I don't know if she does porn now or if she directs porn. But anyway... That chick, remember that chick on Twitch? That really, really pretty Asian chick who allegedly was uh, got caught masturbating on Twitch and all that shit? Not alleged. The video's out there. But you know what I mean? Like, no one remembers her name. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be a... Even I don't remember her name. And I've seen the video. But I don't remember her name. Like, you gotta be die hard to remember, <laughs> to remember that chick's name. You remember Dark Side Phil. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember where I was at or what I was doing when I heard that chick did that. I just know I saw it. I don't, I don't, I remember, <laughs> I remember where I saw it when DSP, Dark Side Phil, Dark Side Karen, Dark Side Pill did it. I'll tell you that. Holy shit. Water under the bridge is garbage. The problem is the toxic people who literally follow me around and harass the shit out of anyone who associates with me. So I'll give you an example. Someone sees my content for the first time. Tweets me, wow, Phil, I really like your content. You know, I watched your stream today for the first time. It was really, it was a good stream. Thanks a lot for the content. Immediately, 20 people fucking jump on that person and harass them on Twitter. Fuck you, you shouldn't watch Phil, he's a piece of shit. Fuck you, fuck you. And it's like, what the fuck? The person's like, what on earth just happened? I thought I was watching, you know, a streamer who was fun, and I get attacked for liking someone. Well, fuck this, why am I going to bother with this for? I don't want this nonsense. And then they just stop bothering with it, right? So it's the same kind of deal. Any, anyone, you know, a company... Wants to sponsor sponsor me within you know two minutes of me announcing the sponsorship, they get harassed the fuck like crazy, and they're like, "Well, crap, we don't want this this shit, so we're not gonna do it, right?" Um, and that's the problem. If I joined a streamers association within five minutes of, of anyone knowing that I was associated with them, they'd be harassed to hell. And especially if it's a group of only eight hundred people, that's not very big. They're not gonna want to deal with the negative shit from these fucking these these. Quite frankly, these mentally uh, unsound, unstable people who just go out of their way to do nasty shit. They're not gonna want to deal with that shit. <laughs> I mean, here, let me give you, these people have gone to the point where they've tried to cancel my utilities, they've impersonated me calling companies and trying to make me look bad, um, publicly, they've impersonated me doing things, they've done all this nasty shit behind the scenes you guys don't even know about, these people are really sick and demented, and they go out of their way to do nasty stuff, so, understand that these people would easily go after something like that, alright? Oh, uh, the sponsorship is now gone, I got the chair, <laughs> burn in hell, Burnell. And now I'm going to burn in hell for the rest of eternity because of it. You can't change who you are, I guess. Hell is a place where it's very hot. There's, you know, it's torturous conditions. Fire, hail, brimstone. Uh, you know, your, your body is being ripped apart by demons who are shoving red hot pokers up your rectum. Not a nice place. Okay. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Oh! Easy to eat. Oh! Phil's a faggot. Phil's fat. Phil's a loser. Phil's a beggar. Phil's a racist. Phil's a scammer. DSP is a pedophile. DSP is a thief. DSP is a greedy fuck. This guy's a bitch. I have a micro penis. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, I'm not dead, but I swear to God, I wish I fucking was. <laughs> I wish was. I fucking was. Oh, boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So that is our third and final video of the second day of Galtmas. Uh, let me go ahead and throw some music on. I had some technical difficulties towards the end there, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, throw on some music. We'll reconvene for my final thoughts, and I will uh, I will let you go, and I will see you tomorrow for uh, Christmas Day. Yay! So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, another Galtmas, uh, another episode of Galtmas in the books, I should say. Uh, one more left, and uh, that'll that'll complete uh, our 12 days for 2022. It's been fun, I gotta tell you, but uh, won't go ahead and pop that cork of on the champagne just yet. Anywho, as it pertains to the the DSP nonsense, a lot there. Uh, uh, hopefully, you guys can come away with something from that. There's a lot of stuff he needs to answer for. There's a lot of questions that a, a 2020 revise or redcon might be interesting to listen to. Just keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Just keep that in mind. Um, but thank you guys very much for listening in. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy your Christmas Eve. I hope you guys enjoy your Christmas Day and whatnot. And if you have any time, feel free to swing by tomorrow. It's not a priority. <laughs> you, can you can literally watch tomorrow's episode. You know what I'm saying? Before New Year's or something. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your family. And whatnot. They, they'll they very much appreciate it. I will appreciate that that you'll spend time with them. And whatnot. Because this video will be here. And, um, you know, best wishes to all of you. I very much, very much appreciate the time that you guys have, uh, you guys have uh, chosen to share with me. And it, uh, it means a lot. Anywho. Like I said, I will let you guys go. Yet again. Seasons greetings, seasons, seasons greetings, happy holidays, and uh, you know, I hope your Christmas Eve goes well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, by hook or by crook. <laughs> Take care of yourselves, guys. Later. <laughs>